You know, it's a, it's real easy. Phil Duckett's here. We fucking slide, hey. slide in, bro. Hey, hey, yeah, man. you know, it just feels good, man. It does. It does. You just, it's a, it's an easy way. You know, you don't push it too much. You go, just like walking on stage. You go, yo, what's up? How's it going? You, you know, know. Hey, we're here to do this, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Instead of walking, hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> How you feeling, everyone? And they're like, what is this person oh, about to say? I miss that, but that's I do. I miss watching people bomb, bro. I miss the whole experience I, of this shit. Yeah, I miss watching. Yeah, I miss talking watching. shit to him. I like, miss wow. watching myself bomb. You know, you know yeah, yeah, it's yeah. part of it. But I really <laughs> like telling people, like, wow, really bad set. Good job. Yeah, great <laughs> job. Just ruining. Especially that. Especially if I know you. Like, if oh, I'm yeah. friends, I'm like, wow, you are awful today. Well, that's half of the <laughs> half of the be- of the reason stand up is so fun is just being able to be like, that was really bad, yeah. dude. That yeah. was like really bad. <laughs> and then the person, like, you know, in the beginning, right after you bomb, you you almost don't want to admit that you just bombed so you're like oh fuck off dude but then you know give it about mm, 10 15 minutes you're like yeah that was that's yeah. pretty bad right? i'm such a dick with you. like i i like i like the line is uh crowd's a little sleepy i don't give a fuck if it's the second comment they're like crown seems a little tired like bitch that's your no, job no, 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 you. <laughs> that's your yeah, job yeah you it's know you. and I, I remember when i was at one club and the dude goes he's like they're really tight tonight he's like I guess they're tired and then i went up after him and I came out, so I was like, they must have found some Red Bull and just walked off. I mean, dude, at the end of the day, it's like, well, maybe they just uh, liked me a lot more than you. <laughs> and that, you know, doesn't feel good. And you just go, well, I mean, what are you going to do? Yeah. You know? This ain't a fucking team sport, motherfucker. Yeah. I mean, everyone tries to do good. But yeah. there are there are those shows that uh, every like, pure person bombs after bombs, and then just one person goes up. That just one is obviously very good, yeah. but two just has the exact thing to f- open that crowd up, and everyone after is just like, "Damn it!" Because they were all all in their head were like, "That's gonna be me." <laughs> yeah. Before you go on stage, you're always like, "Oh, this crowd's bad," but I'll um I'll open them up. I got them. I got them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've I've been doing this a while. <laughs> Five years I've in, doing I've been doing this, this a, while. a while. I know what the I've seen enough crowds in my day. It's like, <sighs> yeah, no. That's always fun to see really the young happen. person try to tell you, hey, hey, man, you should probably try to move that. Hey, easy, easy, buddy. <laughs> easy. Oh, yeah, the guys that are surgical with it. Yeah. Because that, that's the type of comic, for sure. Oh, yeah. I don't know about you. Are you like a wordsmith? Do you like uh, exact place, how to say it, or do you like to feel it out on stage and then go, maybe I'll switch this up, you know? But are you like writing it out and going, what's the... Oh, no, no, yeah. no, no. That's not even... I don't even create like that i just i mean i've tried because i've you know i've uh, heard mm-hmm. different comedians tell me like well as a comedian you should be right in an hour at least a day two hours and i'm like yeah i, I tried that. that shit and i was like motherfucker it was just a bunch of bullshit doodle like i'm talking stick figures mm-hmm. and shit i ain't write nothing like i don't work like that like i'm the type i come up with shit just in movement like while i'm just living life yeah, and then yeah. i jot it down i almost always have ideas when i'm walking yeah in the shower. Shower is my favorite, boy. I, I don't know. And I just start busting out in the shower laughing. I'm like, oh, I got to write this That's down. a good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'll be, sometimes I've gotten out of the shower and gotten my phone to write it down. Yeah. So I've done that. And then also sometimes in, in dreams. Dreams, I've come up with horrible premises and a couple like actually good ones. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I smoke a lot ones. of bud, so I sleep so, hard. I don't so even don't have, have dreams any, like that. Yeah, you don't just, have any dreams. I'd be knocked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're knocked Balls out. That's deep. nice. It's a good sleep, yeah, but you don't. I've been having some weird dreams recently. Yeah, nothing crazy, but just like, and I don't remember any of them right now. But it's uh, you. I remember them five hours after the dream. So yeah. I'll wake up, I'll go to work, I'll be working at the moving company or wherever, and then I'll be talking to the guy, and I'll be like, "Oh shit, I did dream about SpongeBob last night." And then they're like, "What? Where the fuck did that come?" Because, but something, Triggered. someone walking by with a certain pattern reminded me of something that happened in that dream, and then it all comes back for like a second and then goes away. Yeah, that's it's but, such a weird dreams are dope though, because like when I do dream, which is rare, it's never like bullshit like SpongeBob. It's mm-hmm. like real life, like really? like it's like. Yeah, it's always deja vu. Like, I'll have a dream, and I don't care. Sometimes it's a year later. Sometimes it's six months, two weeks. Yeah. All of a sudden, I'll be somewhere like, 
oh, oh my God. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. I was like, you were here. You were, I was like, I didn't even know you yet, but I remember seeing, like, you know, I just, it is so strange when it it's happens. Trippy. Yeah, it is really trippy. Like, how is this, how does that work? You yeah, know what, what you think's up with that? I don't mm-hmm. know. Some people say you've had a past life. Some people, like, there's a, so many, like, dreams have so, I find dreams really interesting. So I've read some different theories on, like, you know, symbolism and what they could mean. And then, yeah, are just, you into, like, uh, dissecting dreams? Like, no, no, I'm not, like, studying it, but I find it interesting. Like, when I do see articles it on it, I'll, I'll always oh, read it. Sure. Yeah, I'm like, what? what the Everyone you know? wants to find out. Yeah, I just don't have the attention span to go deeper. After that one article, I'm like, all right. I'm like, okay, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> I get that. Okay, sweet. Sweet, right. And, um, all right, that's uh, yeah. that's that's probably enough for yeah, me. LeBron yeah, LeBron yeah, and yeah, six. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I just, I'm going somewhere else. I, uh, I've, read, I've read a couple things about it, and it's the thing that makes the most sense to me, at least from just the scientific point of view, is um, that it's an amalgamation of things happening to you from the day and then your brain trying to consolidate them with old memories and old skills to either be like is this worth remembering or is it not worth remembering that's what of I've, what I've read of people talking about makes the most sense to me like okay I could see that like because you know before we had all this bullshit electronics everything you'd probably dream about um, like oh I took this one path and I found water and we didn't know water they was there before. There were a lot before. of wet dreams. Yeah, a lot of wet dreams. There were a lot of wet dreams. Yeah, there probably <laughs> a lot of wet dreams. Probably were a lot of before wet dreams. Before phones and and, lo- <laughs> and loincloths, bro. That's not. That's just a wet. It was a mess. Dream. It was, was a mess. Yeah, that shit was on your leg. Yeah. Okay, everyone knew. Everybody thought people pissed the bed regularly. Yeah, but also everyone knew that you were having a wet dream because you'd wake up and they'd be like, "Why is your loincloth up to the side like that?" And, and you're it's like, just stuck. "Oh, I walked into some berries." And they're like, <laughs> "We're in the desert." You're like, no, I I found a, I found a berry berry tree and I walked. <laughs> Into it, and, and that's he's sticking why. straight out. Exactly. Hasn't yeah, yeah. moved. He starched Still hard himself somehow. Yeah, he starched his own lo- his one. And you couldn't get rid of the loincloth. No! There's only one loincloth. You had to go to the river, handle it, put it right you back had, on. Yeah. What are you going to kill another buffalo and then make some more? Yeah, it's a lot. It is. You know, only kings could really do only, that. Only have only different kings. loincloths. Exactly. Only kings. Yeah, that was the real test of how uh, rich you were. Was if you could come in your loincloth and put and on a new pair. Put on a new pair. <laughs> He's like, you know, King got about three draws. Yeah, he got three, <laughs> and that was a lot for him. Three draws, dude. I, I, I was like, we, our dreams are so insane now. Like, what were dreams like for people in the 1500s? I, I, I imagine it was just like a sunset, and that's it. It's like, the entire dream. Like, what? What do they even have to dream about? Taking vitamins. That's it. <laughs> He's like, I want to live to be 26. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, by vitamins, you mean an orange? An or- just like, literally an orange. an orange. They're like, that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're just imagining live. Their 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 dream was their 30th birthday. Their 30th. Like, yeah. I heard things. I've heard things about things happen <laughs> after 30. Happen. I hope I make it. Uh, oh God, that's. I've always. That's like when I think of middle ages, my whole. Concern is like I'm a big hygiene guy. I'm like, so oh, you just assumed yeah. pussy stank in the 1500s. Everyone stank. Yeah, but you thought it all smelled like fish. When in fact, oh, well, the, the thing was, it it didn't, it wasn't even considered stinky because it just was the normal smell. So fish is. They good. were just like, that's pussy. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh my god, that's just that's god. your pussy, dude. And then dick, and because you know balls and dick, can it had smell cheese bad. on it, baby. Yes, you're right. <laughs> Famunga. There's, there's dick cheese and, dick and cheese. Pussy, fish pussy. Okay, that's what it was. That's a charcuterie you're platter. A charcuterie board. Right <laughs> that there. is a nice exactly. charcuterie. Some nice Cottage smoked cheese salmon. and some fish. Oh Lots. god, disgusting. <laughs> How did anyone have, dude? That's why no one was fucking. That's why fucking was then. fucking was strictly for reproducing at that time. Yeah, people weren't just going down on. No, own. no, no one was going down. God. in the 1500s. Well, there were. You know what? There was a sick fuck. No, there were dirty bitches <laughs> there and was dirty. A sick and I'm and by bitch I mean male and female, male, non-binary right. everything. But think but, about yeah. all the kinks there are today. There was somebody back there who was like, you don't like when it smells like. They're like, no. Yeah, but those they're, if you were kinky in the 1500s. <laughs> You were really pushing it because they could, like, you know, the clamps they were using were dangerous, okay? You might actually lose your nipple. Literally. They were committed. Now, we got hospitals, we got Neosporin. Back then, if you wanted to maybe, you might cut your hand off and then it's just gone. Yeah, gangrene. Gangrene, yeah. You fucking, <laughs> he gangrene yourself trying to fuck, yeah. That's it. Your kink is gangrene. What a horrible kink what to realize. The rot. Or they like just love fucking people with the bubonic plague. That's what I was thinking. That's mm-hmm. how it really started. It yeah, like, yeah. Once, yeah, everyone else is running and the one guy's like, mm, I like those lesions. Yeah. <laughs> okay. She's diverse. Yeah, exactly. the, the early yeah. tattoo. That's, yeah, just, fucking, <laughs> just touch them real quick. Ooh. They pop. Oh, yeah. Ooh. He's like, <laughs> yeah. Dude. That was the first girl squirting was the Oh, lesions. my gosh. I'm about to That pop. was it. Yeah, it's so gross, dude. 
<laughs> but yeah, everything <sighs> stank, man. Everything stank. Wow. So you just had, to, I guess you just had to deal with it. Yeah. Just I'll, get used to it. That's actually. I don't know. I mean, it depends. Depressing. You know, when you're with, uh, if you're really into someone, you can deal with some who can some odors. Who can? I can. You can. I've dealt with it. Yeah. That sounds about white. Uh, okay. <laughs> Oh what? Oh black girl. What, I'm black telling you, black, yeah. black women. Black women. Have, I mean, that, I don't happen a lot, but I've ran across all different colored women who exactly. stay. Oh, but as a have. real brother, uh -huh. there are certain things we just not gonna tolerate. If you don't pass the finger test, like if we're getting down and I okay. and I rub across the top layer of panties, okay. and then I do, I'm always gonna scratch my nose or face, and I've done that since middle school. Oh, so you do the test? I do the finger test ever before I hook up with any chick. Are you crazy? The are fuck are you gonna just jump in the lake without seeing how deep it is? Bro, I close my eyes and I jump in. And that's in, that dude. fuck shit I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I was one of the guys in the 1500s. You were? That you was like, were. let me get in there. You, all right? Oh, you were a descendant. I jump in, dude. You should do your ancestry.com. I should. I should yeah. see. Fuck, see what like, your family crest some is? Some barbarians, dude. Probably just a piece of yeah, fish just, and cheese. <laughs> just a guy eating pussy. Eating <laughs> pussy is your family Yeah, that was kind of like my flies around my, it. My great great uncle, his name is Conolingus. He's the one that started. You're Lord of the Flies. Lord of the, oh my God! I'm Lord of the pussy fuss. Lord yeah. of the pussy fuss. And no, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping in. Damn. Okay, so you're doing the test. Yeah, I always do the test since I was young. I'm mm. always in the test. Did someone teach you the test? My uncle. Oh yeah. damn! If anybody who's going to see this who follows me and they uh -huh. they know about my uncle, I talked about on the last podcast I did. He is uh is that uh, on girl on guys we fucked? Yeah, yeah, guys yeah, we fucked. Yeah. yeah, that's the uncle, Uncle T. Uncle T. All right, yeah, I he, didn't hear he, about him. Yeah. Oh, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Oh man, I'm gonna make this man famous. Uh, no, he just. At a young age, when I was uh, like seven years old, he used to teach me how to eat pussy. Yeah, and that's how I learned. Like, I, at seven, at seven, yeah, man. So, he, were you like into girls at seven? Yeah, I started walk, looking at porn when I was six. So it was kind of like, six years old. Yeah, how that happened? I was at basketball camp, and one of the older kids bought me a penthouse when he bought his, and so oh. I was like, holy shit! Like, and the thing is, there was two chicks, and they were covered in bubbles, and I was like, oh my god, I love bubbles! And he was like, you know, what I'm saying like. Yeah, yeah, that that's how a six year old's mind. Exactly though, you're like, you're like I love bubbles. bubbles. I don't really know why they're. I naked, don't know why, but I like, but the I like that they're in a bath together because I like baths. You're like, if this is sex, if it has bubbles, then I like. I yeah. mean, I can get it. You're like, I get it. And, yeah, and so I really started, and um, so yeah, then I would like, so you know, I grew up in the suburbs. I was pretty privileged, yeah. cul de sac brother. So my parents used to make me you're go. Cold, that's, so that's your name, cul de sac brother? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Actually, my boy Derek Gaines. No, nah, I can't even take that. Derek Gaines. Derek Gaines is joking. He's cul de sac black, but I, it was so funny. I laughed so hard because I'm like, I'm from the cul de sac too, man. Like I get really? it. It's a uh. certain type of black. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and so and it was. My parents would send me every summer. We'd have to go. To the hood where her family's from. Both my parents are the only people who went to college on really? in their family. So because we were privileged, my mom would call it tough time where we would have to go to the hood two weeks every summer. Damn. I mean, yeah. that's good for it you. It was. You needed yeah. that shit because I really thought we were rich growing up. So we had a housekeeper and shit. Like, I really thought okay, we were doing yeah. shit. But you would probably also would have been like, this is normal. And then when you went to the hood, you were like, oh shit. Okay. okay. We are doing yeah. it. Like, we were the, like, also, honestly, one of the most, some of the most wealthy blacks we yeah. knew were me and maybe like one or two of the families and we had. Yeah, that was it. voice got lower. You're like, oh shit. It was right. really popping. Yeah, exactly. You know it just I mean? switched it you up. You better. They you if you want to keep your fucking draws, motherfucker. Yeah. Slap the shit out of you. They will beat your ass and take your shit. So you got to be with it. So, you know, but my cousins were always there. So mm -hmm. I would go, my uncle would be down there and we used, you know, he knew I like was in chicks. And I told him about the porno magazine. And mm -hmm. so he used to always, my uncle has always been a player like his whole life. And so, yeah, I remember he used to be like, you know what, nephew? He was like, you know what you got to understand about sex and all this shit? He was like, these men walking around here talking about big dick, slanging big dick. He said, I'm fucking all they bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? He was, let me tell you something. He was like. You take care of a woman, she'll take care of you. He said, I ain't talking financially. He said, he said, let me show you something. He took a peach and he sliced the peach up. You know where you take the pit out of yeah, a peach? Yeah, yeah. Was, he was like, this right here where the peach curve is like, that's the clit. He said, that's your best friend. He said, give it anything it wants. You take care of it. He said, when you take care of that, she takes care of you. Damn. And I didn't know she used to make me practice like eating the peach. He was like, he was like, don't bite it. Don't bite it. Suck that. He's like, eat the peach oh right. Oh, my God, dude. And so my boy was like, so were you molested? I was like, no. I was like, it wasn't live pussy. Yeah. It was 
a beach and I was getting nutrients and vitamins. I don't understand. It's definitely adjacent to something. Well, but it's know. a gray area. Yeah. You know, it's definitely <laughs> a gray area. It's, Maybe it's a peach area. It's an orange area. <laughs> but that, yeah, but, but I never ate fruit right. So anytime I'd be at school, I would just. I was always yeah, like, they'd be like, "Why are you?" Eat? I was like, "Don't worry about it. It's good like this." <laughs> You're eating a pear like. Right yeah. before, everyone's like, oh, Ugh, just chew but it. And there's one girl who had just hit puberty early who's like, my mm, God, Phil. <laughs> I want to go talk to Phil. Her voice is getting low. She's like, Phil. But she think about it. Does when, that thing? <laughs> yeah. When you're that young, doing, you're a pervert. Just always slurping over like, and yeah. then I remember. No, but the, no one knows. Nobody, but they don't. But at the same time, it's still like, well, why do you eat it like that? So I just like eating it like this. And then the first time I ever ate pussy, I was probably like. 16 or 17. So Damn, we got like yeah. 10 years worth of fruit okay. practice. You got you got your 10,000 hours in. Yeah, oh, easily. Yeah. Cuz I was I mean, I'm a very T healthy boy. You get your 10,000. Yeah, hours I, very so I was eating fruit regularly. I was eating peach all, all the, time. the time, baby. Damn, if you grew up in Georgia, I was going to be like, it's the peach thing. Well, but, South, you know, Carolina South Carolina is actually oh, the peach. Yeah. Fuck, you're yeah. right. Galveston. Come on, baby. Yeah. So, you know, peaches were easy to come by. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's but then yeah, like I said, I was like 16, 17 the first time I ever went down and I remember Cause the girl was like, you know, I was like, I've never done it before. She was like, just try it. And when I tell you, your boy, Mr. Duck, it went to work that day. Yeah. Yes, sir. I clocked in. <laughs> <laughs> I clocked in, baby. And the thing is, she got mad at me after we were done. Cause uh -huh. she was like, you're full of shit. Like you're a fucking liar. She was like, so you just oh, lied to me to she say she could go down. I was like, I swear. She was like, nobody eats pussy like that that's never done. It. I was like, I swear to God. She's was, like, you know more about my pussy than I do. And I, but yeah. I knew what the clip most, you know, and women talk this shit because it's very true. Mm hmm most men don't know where the clit is. And honest to God, I've known where the clit was since I was six, but I never knew that women had three holes down there. I thought piss and sex Bro, all happened out the same me hole. Me too. Me too. So all dudes. I was this. dumb as hell, but I oh, knew yeah. where the clit was. I remember asking my girl. I mean, dude, Steph Daggs just had a tweet where she talked about this a couple weeks ago, but the same thing. Her boyfriend asked her, how do you pee with your tampon in? I asked my same girlfriend that like four years ago when we were together, and she was like, but the thing what is, the we're always about? grown asking that. It's not like something you're asking in sixth grade. You're adults, and like, it's three motherfucking entrances in that batch. Yeah. Like, you have no idea. Well, two. Well, that asshole's a different entrance. You're talking about oh, there's, there's two. two. There's two. Yeah, there's two. two. But it's three. Oh, three, the three down there. Yeah. Yeah. Bop, bop, bop. There's three. Yeah. Yeah. And they're almost Orion's equal. belt. <laughs> <laughs> it is Orion's belt, <laughs> and you have to spend time on each, each star. Each galaxy each, is equally, different. Each galaxy is different. You know, and, and what's good for the goose ain't good for the gander. That's so, right. We're just speaking in Come on, metaphors, yeah, baby. baby. Yeah. It's good stuff. I like yeah, it here, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. I really like what you're doing. Okay, so, damn. All right, so you were just, you Uncle or Uncle T had just showed you what was good. He had, he had uh, you know, given you a bunch of peaches, made you practice, but not in a gross way, in a helping way. Yeah. Like as a, like as a father. Yeah. No, my dad would definitely not condone that shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, saying he was like, yeah, but, but I owe you. But yeah. here's the thing: my parents are very conservative, and uh, I was always the wild child. So when yeah, I had too. questions about shit, it was awkward asking because my parents are so religious. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'm gonna call my uncle because he's gonna give it to me. Real. Did you ever ask your dad anything? No, dude. I asked my dad one, two. I've talked about this before twice. I asked him what a camel toe was. He told me to look it up. And then I asked him, like, well, how do you know if you can, like, come? Because I remember my friends had said they could. And he just was like, just just try. I don't know. Oh, my yeah. God. He was like, <laughs> have you try. tried? And I was like, and I think back to it now and I go, oh, my God, that must have been so weird for him. But yeah. it's like, dude, it's hard, bro. I don't know how I, I'm going to have to be as a dad. Have you thought about how you're going to be as a yeah, dad Yeah, all the time because I want kids soon. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm be 32 next month. Like, I think in the next three years I want to have be at least – I mean, I say married, but chances are I'm going to cheat. So I'd rather just have a kid. Um, <laughs> I mean, let's, let's not lie to ourselves. Hey, the Bible says to thy own self be true. Okay? Oh, my God. So I'm going to keep it 100. Look at this <laughs> slick Rick over here, man. You got it from Uncle T. Because that, because the way you describe that, I'm like, that is a slick talking dude right there. He's the kind of guy that could, would get caught cheating and be like, no, baby, it's all good. And like somehow find I was a way. trying to get better yeah. for you. Exactly. This is for you. Yeah. And you're walking in on me. How dare you? I'm a, yeah. You but know? that is literally pimping 101. Flip the script. I mean, you're right. It is. I didn't do anything. You did it. You Why'd did you it? come into the room without knocking? Some would call him pimping 101. Others would call it gaslighting. But yeah, you know, it's, <laughs> either way. It's, tomato, tomato. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So you would you would just ask Uncle T. Yeah, yeah. I would always if it was anything like sexual or like uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my uncles just always. It's kind of nice to have that actually. It really is because I think that's One a, step the problem. Removed. Right, and you got to. I think a lot of kids have these questions, especially at early age, earlier than most people think. Kids are thinking, and then as kids, you don't 
you don't know. Yeah, like you said, you don't want to ask your parents. So now you go to Google or you go to one of your stupid friends who thinks he knows every mm -hmm. fucking thing. Next yeah. thing you know, you got AIDS or a baby at 12. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, or you don't know how to finger like pretty much every 13-year-old. Yeah. Yeah, I like being yeah. a little more advanced in the pack, though. I know you did. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, by the way, not everyone had an Uncle T. Okay? Yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah. Well, hey. For most of us, it was like we, you know, because when you're a kid, you don't know what you're curious about is taboo until you ask it. Right. So as a kid, you see something, and you're like, what is that? And then you want to ask. And then when you see people react, you go, oh, this is not supposed to be talked about, which just makes you want to ask about Even it more. Even more, yeah. yeah. Like, but the uncle is good because it's like, it's not your dad, so it's not this weird thing where you're like, he does that with my mom right it's your uncle and a cool uncle can work you know right, everyone right. kind of has to have that uncle that isn't married fucks around i mean i have that my, yeah. my like one of my uncles uncle george dude he just his he was married but it just it never stuck and now i was talking to him the other day and he was like he was asking me about um he's like you have a girlfriend or whatever i was like i was like i don't know man i just i, I keep going I'm seeing different women. I'm going on dates and stuff. I'm, I'm also doing my own thing. And he was like, take advice from me. He's like, don't ever get one. He's like, I always had a better time without it and figure stuff on my own. It's just better. And I was, and this guy's 65. Oh, and he's man. been actively <laughs> trying to die for like probably <laughs> five to eight years. Just doesn't give a shit. Goes to Africa and just like goes in the junk, like literally junk, like there's jungle elephants and shit chasing Big him. game hunt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but not, not even just like going on safaris. And he's like, yeah, I almost got killed by an elephant. Anyway, I'm back. And, but he just doesn't care. He's like always lived his life. That's probably, but I mean, people think I live like that too. Yeah. I'm a pretty much a free spirit when it comes. I do a lot of wild shit. People are like, what? And it's just, yeah, it's just kind of. What's the most recent wild shit you did? What do you think? Well, I mean, white water COVID, rafting. When was that? Two months ago. Uh, where'd you go? I was back in Georgia. Oh. Uh, I was, uh, yeah, I was. I went right to the like border of Tennessee, Georgia, North Carolina. We go mm -hmm. white water rafting. You know, I got a lot of Caucasian friends, so I do some. So you leisure, do some that's, that's, leisure that's activities. A Caucasian Come on, thing. I was the only brother for like thirty eight miles. I didn't see not one <laughs> nobody look like me. No, you had your little radar. You're like, there's none of us. Well, they were here. like, they were like, you sure you don't want another life jacket? I'm like, brother, I can swim. You're like, I can swim. <laughs> right, God damn it. You're right. The fuck, <laughs> just give me one. I'm like the rest of you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I appreciate it, right. but also, I know how to fucking Yeah, hey, I okay? feel like you're being funny. Yeah, you didn't ask exactly. nobody else for two. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. What the fuck? None of you guys are even yeah. wearing like right. that. Right, what are you what talking about? You brought one just for me and you wrote Phil on it? <laughs> yeah, come on. Why does it say Black Phil on there? Come like, on, man. Bro, what the fuck's going on? Yo, the thing is, they were cool as shit, but you could tell, like, they, they yeah, it was yeah. backwoods, man. Like, you know. What uh, what uh, stage rapids were there? Oh, no, it was every, it was uh, four or five. Four, yeah, no, no, no. I want to say six is the highest, so there was yeah. none of them. Yeah, I want to say four and five, and there were uh -huh. some threes, but I want to say it was probably like two or three fives, and then that the rest were four. That scary, bro. Oh, well, next time I'm doing the Olympic course. In, uh, oh, the one in North from, Carolina? No, right? from the uh, 96 Olympics in Atlanta. They still have that oh, course. Oh, they so still have it. They're going to, because they're all like guides. So when they're off work, I'll go and oh, smoke. Oh, you were going bud. with a bunch of guys. Yeah, and I'm oh, dad. Okay. So yeah. that's why you were comfortable. Yeah. Right. Oh Sweet. no, I would never just go out there on some deliverance. No, I type thought it shit. was just some white dudes you knew. Because that is you a don't white... do that in the south. Just but... go with random white people to the woods. <laughs> right. Hell no. <laughs> you gotta have a rapport with these people. <laughs> I meant dudes you knew, but they weren't guys. Oh no, yeah, no, yeah. no. These are guys. Yeah, and okay. it was on their off day, so we just smoke and do shrooms. How'd and... you know them? Uh. Just um, by yeah, yeah, I'm from the South. You know, I went to private school and shit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just, you know, a bunch of... Private middle school or private high, or private uh, high school or private college? High school. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, so you went... Okay, yeah. So, so I got a lot of... Suburb, like, yeah, like, yeah I went, black. like, the governor's son of South Carolina. Yeah, I went to school with... We graduated in the same class. Oh, shit. Yeah, we used to party with them. That's fun. fun. Yeah, man. We got some connections yeah, down there, yeah, baby. You do have some connections. Yeah, the 803. That's good. That's uh, Those are good people. So how were the Rapids? They were fantastic. Yeah, I, oh, I... We, uh... I flipped maybe twice the whole day, but it was it, it was a couple times though, because you know you're not supposed to stand up when you get when you flip off that you're supposed to keep your feet yeah, elevated. You can get your feet dude, those rocks rock, shit, well, right? Yeah, dude, I, my shin hit a rock pretty good, dude. My shit was fucked. Up. I mean, it was swollen, but it wasn't. Yeah, yeah it's fine. But yeah, but you don't want to look like no bitch, so you're like, no, I'm good, I'm you're good. Like, I'm chilling. But, then they, but I'd already squirted a little piss. It yeah. hurt like a <laughs> I'm sorry. That shit scares me, dude. The the getting your feet caught. That's the thing that scares me the most. I've fallen it. in a uh, hydraulic before. My you boy, have. I, yeah, that. But I luckily I held my breath and I was counting. I remember being under and I was like, God, please get kicked out. Get kicked. And I was under probably like four or five seconds, which feels like ever. It feels like an eternity. But my boy got sucked and I was really and luckily they were able to get a rope to him because he just kept getting circled in and back. And I was like, Oh shit! Like it, you're like I'm about to watch my friend. Yeah, I'm about to watch him drown. And they got to him, dude. That's the. It's one of the scariest feelings is when you see something that you're like this might end yeah. in death dude it's and it's helpless right 
Because you're water. not. You, if you get in there, you're. Fu- you I mean, you're literally shit. Fucked. Yeah. So. Yeah. But and then after you don't die, it is one of the craziest rush you've oh, ever. Oh, feels so yeah, it's good. Like, holy, we you're, just cheated death. Yeah, you're like I'm all powerful. Right. Yeah, right. So just you were lucky, dude. But I love the water. I grew up around the water. Like I'm terrified of heights. Like I I freeze up. I can't move. Like I shut really? down. So I could never go skydiving. And like in high school, we went uh, to Belize for our senior trip, and uh-huh. so we hiked. Uh, we went to the top of the Mayan temples. I, all the white people dangling their feet off the edge, want to take pictures. I was locked to the wall, <laughs> could not fucking move. I know, literally. And they were like, come on. I was like, if you fucking touch me, I'm going to shoot you in the face. Yeah, yeah. I could not handle it. I don't do well. And then we went rappelling off of a, a mountain in Belize, and we rappelled for like 150 feet after rappelling? 100. Yeah, off How a mountain. How do you sign up to rappel? Again, I went to a really wealthy private school. Yeah, I so was we had, say, yeah, God damn. 150 feet down, we're still above the jungle canopy. And I remember crying the entire way like i do not wow. do well at fucking heights like i don't i'm not i mean it's that. natural you know I, is it because everybody's like why are you afraid it's only if b- bad if you fall pitch i'm dead well how, if if you fall from a lower point it's not a big deal if i fall <laughs> i'm dead that's right? why i'm scared what are you talking about? yeah i never i never get on people i mean i am decently afraid of heights uh not afraid of the water uh, not not afraid of snakes, but like it, it's all just a, a tempered amount of fear. But when anyone has fear of snakes, heights, I mean, maybe sh- sharks, not as much, but like snakes, heights, even claustrophobia, stuff like that, that shit's all natural. Like it's programmed into your DNA. It's Absolutely. programmed for us to be scared of snakes because they probably killed one of your ancestors. It's programmed for us to be scared of heights because fucking yeah one of your great great uncles probably fell off a cliff by right. accident so now you're like i'm gonna stay away from yeah, that you hear sir you're yeah. this natural fear and it's passed down from parents like for how do you do with mris you know i can't you can't do them i, I, I took i had well like after five times I, yeah, they let me go home i took a xanax took two shots and came back fell asleep wow yeah. okay yeah so I for can't. me it's weird i i get really calm in them i almost fall asleep <laughs> you're a psychopath it, you know, i know i know it's because <laughs> what's going on in the outside all that noise is like soothing because that's what's going on in my brain all the time. So it's like, eh, eh, boo, 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 boo. and I'm like, oh yeah, I've heard this before. Wow. And I just like, I usually just chill out. If I open my eyes and I see how close it is to me, I'll start to be like, this is really fucking close. I don't like it. But if I close my eyes and just go like, this is fine. Hear the noise. It's all good. I can just go off to somewhere else. To me, it sounds like yeah. somebody's nailing my coffin and they are burying me and I am screaming. Like, dude, I... I couldn't, like, I literally was like, <gasps> so you scream? Yeah, yeah, no, I screamed at the top. And it, like three, four times, like, they put me in and they had to drag me out. So I was like, give me the fucking, like, I don't do it. Wow, that. okay. Because my one of my, I have a major fear. I don't know where it developed. Uh-huh. Being buried alive is probably one of my biggest fears. I don't know. I saw an episode of CSI one time, I think, when I was like in middle school. <laughs> And I'm telling you, traumatized you, you, I'm telling you, I was like, could you imagine waking <laughs> up underground? Bitch. <laughs> You better not watch that movie with Ryan Reynolds, uh, Buried or whatever it is. Oh, I would never. That's What's the, the, movie? the name sounds dumb. I would never watch that. I want to. I want to look it up. It might. It might. It might. It might. It might trigger you just seeing the movie. Uh, Ryan Reynolds, Buried movie. Is this new? No, that's kind of old. It's called. It's called Buried. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's literally called. All right. Let's hear this. It's gonna be an ad first, right? Is there gonna be one? No, there's not. Oh, bitch! <laughs> no. Oh, no. 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 Uh-uh. Woo! And he's. What's he gonna do? He has a phone. I'm buried in a coffin in the ground. You have to help me. You have to help me. I can't breathe. How did you end up in the coffin, sir? Why are you asking dumbass questions? I hit in the head. I blacked out, and that's the last thing I remember. I'm going to be held for ransom. I need $5 million. How do you turn around? Okay, Mr. Conway. Wait, 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 wait. I need to win What's going on right now? Oh. I need more time. I'm begging you. Let me out of here. I promise you I will get you the money. Oh. Damn. So that's your worst I'll, nightmare I'll, is what I'll, you're I'll saying. To be honest, though, like it that like took my breath away a little bit. Like, okay, you're like I can't. That, yeah, yeah. Like, just the thought of that shit. Like it's like Damn. I would hope I'd have a heart attack. Ninety minutes. That's almost like three years. <laughs> you would be like, give me a heart attack in the next five minutes. I would probably take my keys and start trying just to punch the, my jugular. Like what you could out. probably do is just um, 
hyperventilate until the oxygen started to run out, and then you'd pass out and suffocate. Oh, the... just at it? Oh, yeah. Man, that's that's, how, that's yeah. not that bad, right? That Easy. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not horrible. <laughs> Worst yeah. case scenario. Worst case scenario. <laughs> yeah. How about don't be under the ground? How about that? Yeah. I'm trying oh. to think what's the what's the worst way. I think I'm I'm definitely scared of drowning. Yeah, everyone says like it's, it's the most peaceful. Yeah, but it's like you hear that and you go, F- "Fuck no, it isn't. It's peaceful when you start to when the lights start to turn off. But when you take that <laughs> when you take that first <laughs> and you, you're like, that's not peaceful. You're not like, <laughs> oh, lights. yes. You're like, oh, I can't breathe. <laughs> and then you just slowly you're like, well, never mind. Like that's I I don't know. Yeah, they say it's the same thing that the same chemical is released when you smoke DMT. So I guess that's why everybody says it's so peace. I've never done DMT. Mm. It's one of the few things. Yeah, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it. I kind of want to, you know, but at oh, the same I time, do. I don't know. I'm like, why don't I just wait for when it's time to die? If that's what's gonna naturally like, let it be the final high. Why not? You know, I don't try want to blow to the high and then yeah, it doesn't when, hit the same when you I'm dying. All, but you also know when you do a drug, a lot of times you don't know how to do it right the first time. Okay. So you take a couple test runs, <laughs> all right? You know what to do. You go from novice to moderate expert. So Got then when you. you die, you know how to take advantage, have a good time. You know, just run that high as long as you can because after that, you're going to, you know. Would you ever do what they call the uh, ayahuasca? Ayahuasca, yeah. Ayahuasca is like a 24-hour DMT. It, yeah, that's a long time. Yeah, I think I think it goes in ways. You've, you've done mushrooms, right? Well, I love mushrooms. Yeah, so you know how mushrooms it kind of goes up. Is it and like down? that? Because I'm telling all that thing when they say that, I'm thinking of Mike being on acid for 24. I'm like, it's too much. It's yeah, too acid. Much. When I've done it after the 12 hours, you're like, that was great, and I'm really happy it's over. But yeah, because yeah. it was too. It's Same too long of a contract. I, see, I don't mind the mushrooms. Mushrooms I don't are know, six hours, and but you still feel I it. I think for I about eat two them so later. much. I just kind of like maybe you have things. a higher. Tolerance. But with acid, it's all like sometimes I'll do acid and scare myself like I'm never coming back. Like. I pushed it too far. Oh, I've had that. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and you're yeah. really nervous. You're like, in it and you're just like, am I going to think like this forever? Right, because this is terrifying. Yeah. I have really started recently believing that like, this is most likely a simulation. Or I, just, I have this, I have <laughs> those thoughts. I definitely have that. Yeah, and quarantine is probably what helped me snap to feel that. But I'm worried I'm going to do acid and then be convinced that it is. <laughs> and, then, and then just be like, uh, I can't come down because then I'm not going to understand the matrix the way I do on right. acid right now. <laughs> it's uh That's it's so scary. true though. Yo, do you know I was thinking that when I when I was coming over here, my very first TV appearance, you were there. Hmm. Mm. Bay or Bell on A and E, you were the scarecrow. Oh my God, I and, forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, man. And yeah, yeah, for people listening that don't know, there was uh the show uh Bay or Bell. And it was on Facebook Watch for a- for Andy and Facebook Watch, and it was like these couples would go to I don't know a corn. It was a date. It was like a date, and then it was trying to see if the person you were with was loyal or would leave you. Yeah, arguably a, a bad premise because it's really putting people on the spot. Which I yeah. have no problem with what I did. I yeah. took the fuck off. It's yeah. every first date and a demonized. That's first- what I'm saying. Well, here's the thing. Everybody was like, Phil, was that was that stage? I was like, I knew I was going to get pranked, but they didn't really tell you what it was going to be, mm-hmm. you know? And then I really didn't know what was going to happen. So when you jumped off and took off running, I'm going to be honest, as a brother, that's why I'm we, out. We run, bro. Black people, we, we I didn't know what the fuck, but he started chasing me. Get the fuck up out of here. Let's, I'm out. We're, we're done. not going to play like this. Yeah. I'm out of here. I don't like you. I don't barely know your last name. Barely know your last name. We ain't yeah. never had sex, baby. It yeah. is, you are on your own I'm right sorry, now. You don't have you don't have kids? Yeah, no. No. no, no, no. Oh. I mean, it's the right move to I do. I feel like that. You know, everyone's like, whoa, what happened to chivalry? It definitely died. The- chivalry, it takes time. Okay? It does. I th- it takes time for me to be chivalrous to you, just like it takes time for us to, you know, move from base to base. You right. know what I mean? But you're taking bullets for women? You ain't never On seen the their nipples? Date? No, get the <laughs> fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know if they have a good areola. Right, right. What you sound fuck? dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, wait. Yeah, no, that was a. Uh, and I was just dressed up as a scary scarecrow for he was. five hours. Yo, he was that was a weird working. gig. He I was. just I I I like I don't even remember how I booked it, but it was just it was enough money for two days to where I went, yeah, fuck it. I'll get craft services, meet some people, right? Whatever. And it was fun. I got you know, I got saw you. I saw a couple other people there. Right. It's, it's always weird who you see at these castings that you did not expect them to <laughs> ever. Be I did not expect. It. But you know what's crazy? I'll still go back on Facebook. Last time I checked, it was like 26 million views. That's why I'm like, why the fuck they didn't at least put our social medias right there? I was like, I'd probably have like 50,000 exactly. followers. No one cares. Dude, it's... They don't yeah. give a fuck. That's what I... Yo, I, all these uh, reality TV shows on Netflix, if you had asked me four years ago, 
would you ever consider doing one of those? I, I would have been like, no, never. That's bullshit. That's not, why would you ever? And now I see them go on and they get 1.5 million followers. Yeah. I go, I'm trying to make videos online <laughs> and get six more followers in a month. Right. Fuck that, dude. I'll go be an idiot on. Dude, I'm dude. telling you, it's, it's crazy. To, which I ain't gonna lie. Like, like uh, with the guys we fucked, I was so happy to do it. Yeah. And literally 800 followers and counting in one week. I was like, holy shit. Is this what this is like? Dude, that yeah, shit was exactly. cool as fuck. When people, when people listen and they're devoted and they have a good fan base, you can just, I mean, we, we've got some good, we don't have guys we fucked listeners here. Well, but not we got, yet. We got some, but, exactly. Know. But we got some good loyal fans here. Yeah. That will definitely. They're going to fuck with me. Yeah. I love y'all. Oh, they will. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you love them, they fuck yeah. with them. Better, so, I love them. So, so but yeah, No, it's, I mean, it's the new... That, everyone's like obsessed with reality, though. Or they're, no, they're obsessed with social media is what the problem. Like, if you've been to yeah. these castings and the first quote, before they even say run a line, how many followers do you have? I'm like... Can I at least audition? Like, what the fuck does it matter? But like, I'm better than the person. But they that has want. 100, so they want to know for sure. At least thirty thousand people are going to see this when we put it out. They're just they're, they're everyone. It's all just a metric. Yeah, they're all just trying to like, what's the analytics on this? Instead of talent, like, yeah, wow, yeah, yeah. he's good. Like, no, no, it's completely ruined. And yeah, and that's what I'm saying. And I'm not really the type to be like. I don't want to say spontaneous, but I'm a pretty funny dude. But like to mm -hmm. do these sketches and it's like, I see so many horrible fucking sketches. Of, and people put them out. Most sketches are bad, right? And people put them out regularly, and I'm like, "This is what you want to connect like, your you name to, yeah. right?" I'm like, "You're." And the thing is, sometimes I'm like, "You're a better comedian than this," so you know what I mean? Like, so Dude, it's weird. I have that thought. A yeah, lot. I'm like, "This is what you want to associate with you, I see your people brand." Put stuff out, and I go, "Why are you doing this?" When and, and you know why? I have uh, empathy, or I, I, I never say anything because it's, it's. Yeah, not, I'm not, not knocking not anybody's place, hustle or but craft, it's, but it's um. It never feels good for someone, unless you're really close with someone, to be like, yo, what is this that you're doing? Even then, but even I don't then, like doing it, it. Because everyone has an idea of what they think is going to be the thing to help them move. Especially the when they're excited about it. Like, yo, you see, you see my shit? You see my shit? And you're like... That's good. But you know what I don't like? <laughs> when they have a new video and then they send it to you. And they text Personally? it to you. Personally? Personally. I go, dude, why are you doing this? Because now I have to lie to you and said I, say I watched it. Okay. I just double tap. I know. I double tap. <laughs> I you know what? You know what I do? I watch it. I watch. Here's what I do. Uh, this is not always, but sometimes. And you know what? If you're listening and you send me shit, number one, you should know that you should stop sending it. And number two, I I have done this to you. I'll watch 20 seconds of it, find something to reference, and then I go, "This shit was fu whatever." I reference it, and then I'm out. It's 30 good. minute video. Exactly. That one joke. That, you that did? one joke. And they're That's like, just fire. They're like, it's always in the first 90 seconds. <laughs> it's yeah, dude. in the introduction. I'm yeah, exactly, it's the intro. I love uh, the font on your introduction. Right. Yeah. I love <laughs> the font on your name. Hilarious, yo. Yeah, man. And that's and I don't know, man. And the thing is, and so many and that's just I don't even know. Yeah, it's always actually normally younger comics. I don't even say younger, but some in my class, I think of group like, but then there's normally like the younger who will be like, "Hey, I'm going to send you this, this uh TV show I'm writing." And you're, and I'm mm -hmm. like, why would you, why would you do that? What have, have I done something wrong? Other eyes on it. Yeah, y yeah, but that, yeah, like you said, like now, because I know I'm not gonna read it. Mm -hmm. So now I'm just like, why would you even put me in that type of bullshit? Well, it's like, it, if you send me it, I'm gonna tell you right now. Either you don't send me it, or you do, and you are prepared for me to go. Here's what I think should change. Your and you, whole act exactly everything. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta just trash this entire thing. That's the thing, man. <laughs> and a lot of times people it. can't take. There are like w two to three people that I'll send videos before I post them on, and I'll usually go, "Do I need to cut anything? Like, what do you think about this overall?" If I'm on the fence about whether it's even funny or not, I'll send it and just go, "What do you think?" And I'll be ready to not post it. Because if I'm on the fence about it, it means either I'm too close to it, so I can't really feel it out, or I'm right and it's not that good. Right, right. You know what I mean? But I, yeah, I don't. You, you can't. You have to have like two friends like that, and that's it. Mine. Yeah, I do, but none of them are in comedy. They're all civilians. That's smart. Check this out. That's much. That's, that's much yeah. smarter. <laughs> give me what real like because those are the comedians. people that are going to be watching. That's yeah. the people I'm trying. I don't give a fuck if the comedians, the comedians like no. my shit. You know what I mean? Hell, you've been to an open mic. It's silent. Yeah. Nobody, even no. when it's a good premise. No, they have no, yeah. Give me real people so I can fill it out for real. What's wild is that a lot of, I have a lot of friends, uh, my main group of friends from like high school and college, they are, you know, they're all, yeah, regular dudes, finance, everywhere, like all over the spectrum and, um, and mental spectrum as well. Some of them, are <laughs> uh, they like some of the shit they watch that they send in the group chat 
I almost want to be like, you guys have horrible taste in comedy. Because <laughs> some of this shit I go, this? But you got to go, all right, this is what people are actually sharing. Right, okay, let me let me get off my high horse a little bit and go, all right, if I can make some shit that I am at least proud of that is in this vein, let me just We're do comedy it. snobs. Yeah. Dude. Like, do you understand? We are, bro. I watch Netflix special. I'm like, this is absolutely fucking horrible. Garbage. Like, I'm talking like 90% of them. Oh, oh, the, oh, oh the specials? Right, yeah. 90%. 95% and and I'm like, this yeah. is some of the worst comedy. And my boy's <laughs> like, have you seen such and such? Yes, You dude. remind me of him. I'm like, who? You're like, no! <laughs> Which one? Mm -mm. <laughs> Don't you dare disrespect me like that. But how dare you? Right, but that's the thing. And and so then I have to take a step back like they don't, they're not in this life. They're not at mics and shows every single day and on the road and literally. But that's the thing. I don't even when I watch even when I watch a lot of stuff, like if I laugh hard, that's I'm a fan. And there oh, are some, yeah. and there are some, but they they're all better. There are like, yeah, they're yeah. higher. There high, are like a couple you know guys them. that like make me, and there's also those guys that just however they do it. Um, it just makes you laugh. They're like you know how there's always that person that there are, there are the accepted greats, right? right there's right. like the Chappelle's, the yeah. Burrs, the Chris Rock, right, like right. you know the Meniscalco's, Ali, like stuff like yeah, that, yeah. right? All those people that are like selling theaters, or yeah. just, you're like, okay, even if they're not for me, I can appreciate them as the funny, art, right? They're very good, whatever. Yeah. But then there are people that, and this guy, I would argue, almost everyone would say he's good as well. But for me specifically, like Tom Segura, yeah. specifically for whatever reason. Like, I just think he's so fucking funny. And I know a lot of yeah. people will like him too. Yeah, but he makes me laugh in a, in a special way yeah. that other comics don't. And it's because he's like a dirty, fucked up guy in his head. And he like talks about it. And I go, yeah, yeah, that's me too. You know what I mean? God. That's, yeah. Who's, I who's got one of the guys that, like that, girls for me? that just makes you, you watch and you get excited because you know they're going to say some shit that you want to laugh at? Dan Soder. Okay. Dan Soda is so funny to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, and who else? There's a couple other guys who I just find really funny when I watch them. Like, I, I forget, like, I'm a comedian because that's, I'm laughing. And, and there's almost none. Yeah, when that happens, that's what I'm like, I like that. Dude. And when one of your friends does that, it's really funny. Oh, and I always go, I'm like, you were on fire tonight. That you happened know? to me once um, with Usama. Uh, uh, yeah. Sometimes he, that motherfucker sometimes, shuts some shit yeah, down. Yeah, exactly. He's got, yeah. he's got a couple, but he, he's got, Obviously, great material. We love Usama. He's, um, I mean, uh, he's really also a piece of that shit. Yeah, fuck right. you, Usama. But that's my dude. But, but <laughs> there's... Um, I remember when he first did this, or he was first starting to do it, his um, beatboxing bit. Oh, and I remember when I saw yeah, him do it, I, I told him after, I was like, dude, that is going to be really good. Just keep... And then now he's doing it on AGT. Oh, yeah. You know, or maybe. I don't but know. But that's always yeah. fun when... Because, when, like, as... as as like peers and stuff, like me and Usama talk shit. Now when we say, I'm like, so you're, I'm like, you about to go up first? I was like, well, I know I'm gonna just murder. You know what I mean? Like we're always yeah. like, but the thing that feels good is like we are so hard on each other. When we do have a really good set and you know you're on fire, he was like, come on, my dog, my dog. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, that's why you my guy, because you know, real recognize real. Like we're gonna. Mm -hmm. Say some shit to push you to do your best, but also we are. This is a competition, so we're coming right at each other. But we can respect when both kill it or one doesn't do as well. Oh, we really like. We was like, oh, well, you still you doing know that joke? You've seen them do well. You've seen them kill, so, so that's what makes. Yeah, them. you can fuck with them like that. Yeah, because yeah, he, he'll come off like you really feel good about that. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's the king of that. Yeah, Usama is the king of that, almost to an annoying degree. <laughs> Because you're like, all right, bro, you need to chill the fuck out. We went out. on tour together. The first tour I ever did in Canada, me, yeah. Usama, Joe Russell, and, and my uh, boy Stalky, Rob Stalky. Right? Yeah. And I'm telling you, riding with Usama was one of the funniest shits you've ever fucking want to do. Like, he he's lo an idiot. He yeah. loves the shit. Just fucking uh, love. Just riff. And you know what's time. funny about him is he loves to give it, but then when you get him in certain things, he goes like, oh, wait, dude. Wait, what? <laughs> he like turns it around. <laughs> There's been certain times where I've commented something specific on one of his, his videos or said some shit to him, and he'll FaceTime me and be like, bro, what's good, man? <laughs> what's up? And I'm like, oh, I know I got you now, bro. That's my voice I know, I know, I know I got yeah, you. Yeah, that dude is funny as shit to me. Yeah, yeah, man, it's always fun to sing him a couple times, mm -hmm. man. Shout out to my voice of DK, man. Yeah, man. Nice. Oh, God. But yeah, I, I think, I just, what do you think of... About the state of this com, like, what do you think? I think, I mean, some people are like it's never coming back. I'm like, yeah, you sound like an idiot. That, you're, you're an they're, idiot. <laughs> those are the same pessimists that when this all happened, they bought a thousand rolls of toilet paper <laughs> and all the hand sanitizer, and we're ready to be locked down forever. Right, right. That's true. What I think is going to happen is it's going to open in phases. There's already outside shows now. Yeah, people already want to go. 
What I think is going to happen is um, hopefully by the December they have some kind of vaccine because that whole Operation Warp Speed is the uh, trial right now where it's it's the project they're trying to make. I don't know, like ten million a month or some shit, like some crazy number. So hopefully by then people will start to take it. I still think you think people are. I mean, there's going to be some moron who takes it next. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One, a couple of my friends who are in me- the like medical field are like, don't take the first one. Well, yeah. I don't think you got to be in the medical field to even say that. It's like, think about the side effects for a heartburn pill yeah, yeah. where you could go blind. The FDA makes you test them motherfuckers for like 10 years before you ever sell it. Yeah. And now you create a vaccine for a super virus in eight months and you think I'm going to be the guinea pig? Y'all nah, sound dumb as hell. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're okay. like, we got enough bullshit. Okay. That's how the zombies come. It, yeah. <laughs> That's how From the, the vaccine, side effect comes. God damn it. Wouldn't that be <laughs> so ironic if the vaccine caused the actual right, zombie dude, apocalypse? You mean, like, I said, that shit works. Like, oh, you're an idiot. That would be horrible. No, I think uh, next summer... It'll really start to feel normal. No, normal in terms of being able to go to small shows, shit like that. People are already going on tour now. I don't think they're going to be huge tours. But I also think uh, these outside tours, like at uh, drive throughs, are going to be a thing for certain. Not Look, us. Bro, there's just going to be clubs. You know, I'm from the South. I did yeah. two shows in Arizona two months ago, and literally after I left, they shut back down because it spiked. That's I was what I'm good. saying. Dude. But yeah, down you South, good, they don't yeah. give a fuck. The clubs are open. They need yeah, money. It's very dumb. They, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, it really depends. So that's why a lot of comics now from New York, they're like, well, I'm going to hit the road. And I thought about it. But like, my sister got COVID. She was in a coma for 16 days. She literally from almost COVID. died. Yeah, my sister was had a 10% chance of living. So oh, shit. that's why I just got back like a month ago. I was home for three months. Where like, were you? I Well, my sister was in Atlanta. She she lives in Atlanta. Okay. So my parents live in Charleston. But I, I was all in the North Carolina South. So what North happened? Georgia. She got it and did you drive down or No, I mean we couldn't see her, nobody. So I was freaking out, but I had to get out of New York because I was so far away from my family and mm-hmm. she wasn't supposed to make it. And so I was really fucked up. I How mean, old like, is she? She just turned twenty eight. So she was twenty. Oh so. shit. And yeah. she, so she's under thirty and she's she's yeah. in the lowest risk. But, but well, she she was born with severe asthma. So the COVID oh, was, okay. gave her pneumonia. The pneumonia triggered her asthma. Her lungs oh. shut down and Fuck. she was on like she had like she was like ten, breathing ten percent on her own, so wow. they had to put all of her organs on ventilators Respirator and shit. Like she was, yeah, she literally was the only one in her unit who didn't die. It was like a, it was a miracle, bro. Like it was the Damn, scariest. Man. I'm two, happy three weeks of my life. She made bro. it through. Yeah. I mean, I was eating psychedelics like they were the vaccine, and that is really? not a smart decision. When you're going through a lot mentally, oh, man. you spiral like on shrooms, and your sister's dying. You don't. It's hard to come out of did that. Did it? Did it not help you? Because a lot of times, I psychedelics. It would help a lot of people when they get close to death they take psychedelics they say okay. helps not eating an eighth at one time yeah 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 and they, and they, wow, <laughs> just eight, losing Jesus it Jesus Christ yeah just like losing three it. grams I've, I've done that before yeah it's, uh, that's a really good trip but yeah you're gonna get when your mind is it. heavy like that yes like everybody tells you when you're doing shrooms or like being a good, being head a good space. spot that's yeah. what everybody tells you being a good when you're already in a no I didn't even really I just I my you know in soberly my mind was so heavy I was like, I'll just see, man. I was like, maybe this will help. Like, maybe I'll just be like, oh, I don't mm-hmm. give a fuck. Completely opposite of what you what you wanted. And it was yeah. like, no, this gives a big fuck. And matter of fact, I'm thinking about every worst case scenario. And that just can go think along about, you know, what it's like, what even is death, how she feels. And that then stuff. You, I'm like, she's, you know, because my parents, because I'm like, she's in a hospital by herself with all these fucking tubes in her. Yeah. Like, it was really starting to really get bad, you know? And I was like, oh, God. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> probably not the best. Because no. a lot of people, right before they die, they will take trips like, um, I, th- I think they've done studies with terminal like cancer patients or whatever, and it'll it'll uh, mitigate their fear of death like pretty substantially, because I mean you've done a decent amount, you know, not when you're worried about your sister, but right. it kind of everything kind of makes sense in a different way. Yeah, you like um, n- nature is just makes perfect sense. We go circle. this is great. Yeah, and circle. It's okay. Yes, I'm gonna die, but that's all right. Yeah. Um, and I mean, when when I get close to dying, I'll probably do the same thing as well. But so I would assume maybe it would help you with your sister. But when you're stressed out, no, 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 yeah, yeah. That's I mean, I'm happy she made it. Though. I am too. I mean, yeah. I, and really, I mean, like I said, so she's you were back there with to family. Were we just taking care of your parents? Or? Yeah, I was. Well, my I was shit, parents taking care of me. I was just trying to be the strong son, you know, because my parents were holding up. But did you notice anything in you personally that you? Um, maybe hadn't been aware of before in terms of how you deal with crisis like that or trauma? Oh, well, I've learned, well, I learned a lot that my parents don't tell me shit, especially everything, because they're like, you're an emotional guy and Uh you don't handle things well. And I was like, that's, because I was mad that I would find out details after the doctor. I was like, why didn't you tell me? They were like, 
we, you're already so stressed. We, you uh-huh. don't really take that type. And I was like, so what you saying? I'm a bitch? And then I was like, maybe I am emotional. <laughs> the ego came yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> but it's the truth. I really yeah. don't. But I'm going to tell you one thing. It was just, uh, not scary, but it was, well, it was, it was wild. So when my sister woke up from the coma. Mm-hmm. Um, Did they put her into the coma? They, it was a medically okay. induced coma. Okay. Yeah, because like I said, she her organs weren't. They were having weren't to work too hard well. to even. Oh, just to keep her away. Yeah, just to keep her alive. If she would have had mm-hmm. to use her own organs, she would have died. It was even too much stress wow. on, her, on her. Everything, like I said, she couldn't. Her lungs weren't working. Did they give her like uh, remdesivir or any of that new stuff? I or have no, no, you have no idea. <laughs> yeah. So you yeah. weren't you weren't that like because some people you know well, again, they get yeah. obsessed with my their, parents' their families, but I couldn't. Okay. Yeah, mother said they weren't. They're like for what you. You know, because I was still You're cussing at doctors. At doctors well, I was already cussing at doctors. I was like, why the fuck can I talk to her? Like, yeah. so you can't send her a message. They were like, no. <laughs> she ain't got her phone? You're like, you're telling me she doesn't got her phone? Wow. Well, she always has her phone, yeah, so that's yeah. bullshit. They're like, sir, she's in a coma. Like, oh, let me see. Let yeah. me see. Turn her the camera will, around. Her ass will wake up if she gets a text she message from me. She hears my voice? I already know. She'll wake up. You know what I mean? Like, I was just not leaving logical shit. Yes, you know yeah, what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. I'm just that Emotional. Yeah, yeah, emotions. And so when she finally does wake up, my mom calls her. She was like, Keegan's awake. She was like, she keeps asking for you. She's like, she says she needs to talk to you. Mm-hmm. So she's like, here's the hospital number. She just says, I got to talk to Phil. So I'm like, of course. Like, immediately, I step out yeah. of work. Like, I go outside. I'm like, yo, yo. I was like, I call the hospital. Mm-hmm. And she's like all groggy. She was like, yo, yo. So I'm like talking, trying to not make her laugh, but I'm yeah. light. I'm like, girl, you scared to see, you know? And she's uh-huh. like, shut the fuck up. She's like, I'm dead serious. I got to tell you something. And I'm like, what's up? She was like, I saw your comedy. And I was like, what? She was like, Phil, I saw your comedy and no bullshit. My response was, was I bombing? Like, that was literally the first thing I asked her. I was like, what do you mean you saw? She was like, no, like, I saw the whole entire thing. And I was like, so what? I was like, what do you, what do you, what do you mean? She was like, Phil, like, I always thought you were going to really be big in this comedy thing. Uh-huh. She said, like, because just, I've just known you my whole life. She yeah. said, but she said, now I have no doubt that you're going to be huge at some oh, point. Oh, she, she was like, in the coma. She was like, Phil, like. She said, but the problem is, she said, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're supposed to be really, really big. She said, but you didn't make it. And I was like, wait, she was like, you you were supposed to be like this household name, like this huge mm-hmm. comedian. She said, and then you got, you stopped taking comedy serious because you felt like it was taking too long for you to blow up and everybody was getting bigger than you and you were supposed to be big. Wow. And so you quit taking it serious. She said, and you got strung out on drugs, dude. And she said, and you were in jail in Cuba. I said, what? You're like, okay, well, maybe right, the that's second what I part- told her. I said, yeah. I was following you up until Cube. I said, how did I get there? She said, buying drugs. I said, that's on brand, actually. Yeah, yeah. You're like, you know what? Half of that prophecy <laughs> makes sense. The other half, I think it was the drugs. Right, dude, but, but I swear half, to God, I yeah. laughed so hard because I was like, I swear to God I was with you until the Cuba. She's like, I'm just telling you what I saw. But the thing is, my boys were like, Phil, that does sound like you. They're like, you always talk about like, dude, how long am I supposed to like do this and be poor without- I feel you, bro. You know what I mean? Like, what if I'm doing this 40 years to have it make it talk about just right around the corner? And they're like, that's a chance. You they were like, but I doubt it'll take that long. But it's um, it's a really hard struggle that almost all of us have to go through, which is thinking this should have happened already and it's not happening and going, how much longer do I have to wait? You know what? And- I think people deal with it outside of comedy, but I, I think it's very specific in how intense it is in comedy and in acting in general, because or just the, the industry in general, because, you know, you're a doctor, you study, then you do your, um, you do your residency, then you become an undersurgeon, whatever the, yeah. whatever the hierarchy is. A lot of businesses have a hierarchy that you know you can usually hit. If you hit your numbers after, or you do yes. this, you get promoted. There's plenty of great people who don't make it. 100%. In NBA, in yeah. entertainment, there's some of the so best So many athletes. entrepreneurs that right. you're like, why didn't this business ever take off? How many times have you like gotten, uh, there's been products that I really like that I go, where did it go? I The other day, I'm actually going to reach out to them because I'm like, I want to do whatever I can to at least get the name out. There's this like new coffee brand. It's just canned coffees. Yeah. There's a million drinks. You know what I mean? Right. It's hard for any of them to get any kind of like market penetration. Right. But this one drink, I uh, it's called, it's got like uh, lion's mane, a bunch of other like uh, mushroom supplements in it and stuff. And it's good. It tastes good. It's got, it's just a good product. Right. I went to their Instagram. They have like 300 followers and I go, dude, these people could not exist in a year. And what can I do to help them out? Because that person could be, it could be an amazing product and because they don't have the money or the backing or they don't get lucky with one person snapping a picture with Gigi Hadid, right. they'll never get known. Right. And it's like that's that's the reality of getting into entrepreneurship, of it's getting into comedy. And 
I always think about how if you from five years from now, like, so you're 32, right? Yeah. So, you're, so your 37 year old self comes back and goes, Phil, listen, I know you're wondering when is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? It's going to happen in the next five years. I can't tell you when, but it is going to happen. Just keep going. You would then have no problem for the next five years working your ass off, going at it because you felt secure and confident because someone else told you right. and it was certain. Right. But we don't have that. Even though... Other people do tell you stuff exactly. like that all the time. But even though 37-year-old Phil, if he could, would come back and tell you, yo, bro, it happens in two and a half years, this shit, blah, and he lines it all up. That could happen. That could happen to all of us, but we don't know. And that's the most... It's like you just have to have this blind confidence and faith yeah. and it's so but it sets us apart easy. from every other anybody else because that's what people don't understand like number one I don't care what you do if you don't believe you're going to be the greatest in it you shouldn't even be fucking doing it because the, you know what I mean like if you don't have that type of confidence in yourself you're already going to have enough self doubt in yourself that you have to believe that strong. you need to have confidence I'm very good at this I think you need to have confidence this is what I'm meant to do okay? that's what it is I think the greatest thing can get a little frustrating because whatever, and it focuses on an ego to a sense where maybe you're feeding into that. Don't get me wrong. I'm the greatest feeds people to be literally the greatest, like Jordan, Kevin, all those or dudes. Or it pushes you to at least shoot you. for yes. that. So if you fall short, you still in the top. You know yes. what I mean? That's but why when I think you go like, like, I deserve to be here no matter what, that's what's going to push you through those years where shit is not happening. Through those months, dude. I mean, dude, do you know? Some it's like one week, it's crazy. One week, everything's happening. This is great. I got guys we fucked. My sister just came, like just came out of the coma. This is going well. I got a manager calling me. It's happening. It's right. this is finally it. And then a month later, you're like, damn, I haven't heard from you know what I mean? And I haven't been on and, stage in a week. Yes. And and those are those waves that just never stop. It is a roller coaster and, being a like it's an emotional roller coaster, like you said. It is. And the only thing that helps, I think, is Having people that you know you can count on and uh, spend time with and enjoying being in it. And that's a, dude, that's a reminder you have to tell yourself basically every day. Absolutely. It's like every day you got to go. Am I enjoying this? Is at least some part of it fun? All right, let me keep going. And that's what it is. I and have you, such a good time doing it. Yeah. And they know, there's no greater feeling than rocking a fucking room. Like that's a, it's a high you can't find really anywhere else. And it's you different. reassess, you know, you yeah. might reassess a, a year and a half later and go, okay, I still want to do this, but maybe I'm going to investigate this side of it a little bit more. Right. Or maybe I'm going to not put as much time into this, which three years ago, I really thought I was going to, you yeah. know, it's like a, it's, it's, um, What's the word for it? Not it's determination, but it's also the that like unending, just being earnest and pushing through. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I can't think of the, there's ambition. a word for it. Yeah, yeah, ambition. Yeah, but just having grit. I guess. Yeah, is, yeah. yeah. You know, just Gritty, no yeah. matter what, just continuing to go on. That's, I mean, that's yeah, that's what it takes. I mean, yeah, for sure. She saw the future, though, man. Hey, it'll happen. Bro. I really hope so, man. Like you know, I said, know. I don't. We we'll just keep on. We we'll keep pushing. I you keep pushing. I can't imagine me doing anything else. Like like I said, I got a real job now that we're civilians and can't mm -hmm. perform. So I have like a corporate nine to five. And when I realize how dumb people really fucking are, it oh, yeah. genuinely pisses me the fuck off. Because I think we all like to assume that everybody is on our same level intellectually. Of intelligence and, and majority of people shit. are just dumb as fuck. Like, you are a lot smarter than you think most of us. Some yeah. of y'all watching this actually are dumb as fuck. Yeah. But, but, or some of those people, they've turned off some parts of it because they're just coasting through life. Yeah. <laughs> some people are just coasting, man. Just and vegging you know out, as my mom yeah. says. And you know what? Some of those people, that's great. You know, where, where you are, you're in a decent job. You're just, you're nine to five it, and you just come home, you coast, you sit on the couch. That's fine. Not for me, but if nah, it makes you happy, that's, true. that's okay. But if you're in New York City, you shouldn't be coasting. Let's be honest. No. I don't know how you're, you're probably, living. Because you're probably gonna, not doing great. If you're, you know, I mean, just to be honest. You're going to die, dude. Yeah, you got to yeah. get some money coming in, in this city because it can get real crazy out here. I mean, I literally just, I was homeless for two years. I, next month will be four years I've lived here. I just got my first apartment. I yes, saw you last posted week, a video. Last fucking week in You posted Harlem. a video of your apartment. And you said you guys don't understand how much this means yeah unless you've seen me through everything right so explain how you 
became home because you said you came from a decent household and you right, went but to that a ain't got college. nothing to do with New York. But yeah. then when you came here, how did you? Did you have money? I had twelve hundred dollars when okay. I moved here. So you came here, $1, and I resigned from my job after grad school because I wanted to go full time in comedy. And my parents were like, "That's cool," and we support the dream. But they're uh-huh. like, "Your dream doesn't mean we support you because you have the tools to be successful, and you're choosing to go chase a dream." Through comedy. So what were if you that, in grad school for? Uh, sports management. Okay. Yeah, and so then, uh, like. You know, before I went to grad school, I was working uh, for an insurance company. Then I went to grad school. So after I got done, I was just like, I'm not going back to work a nine to five. I was like, I've I've tried it. And I was uh, coaching with my pops right now as a college basketball coach. So I thought maybe getting into the family business of college coaching because I played mm-hmm. ball in college. And it was a great job. It was cool. All the sweet gear, just shoes after shoes and sweats. It was, yeah, we were in Adidas school. It was dope as shit. And even with that cool job, I just was like, I don't know if I could still do this every day. Like it's cool, but it doesn't. I didn't. It doesn't light a fire in me, you know. There's no like real satisfaction. Yeah, you know what I mean. And 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 it, everybody's like, "Are you crazy? Like you're working for a Division One college basketball? Like you could be in coaching, which is a very tough gig to even get into." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "I I get it, but that's just not." You what know what's it funny is. though? A lot of times people they go, "Are you crazy? Think about how much money you can make." That's always the first thing people right. say. They go. You could have this many figures or you could have this. It's almost never, are you crazy? You could be really happy. Right. And no one ever says that. <laughs> no, right, but no, that's the thing. Because that, we've tied this money, this money to yeah. happiness, this correlation like that. And every person I know who has a lot of money, most of them are fucked up or their families are fucked up. 100%. And they are loaded. And money is not anything they think about. But I'm like, the shit they got going on, money can't even fix it. So it's like, what the fuck? No, no, no. It's going to cost them a lot of money to even get through it with right. some years of therapy. And exactly. Shit. And yeah. yeah, but yeah, okay, you don't have to worry about shit. And then I know people with no money, I'm like, y'all genuinely have a good fucking time. Oh, they're so happy. Yeah, genuinely have a good time. A lot of times you see people that, who have come from like lower st- economic standards that don't have a lot going on usually are able to have a better time than people that are up higher because they are learning to enjoy whatever it is they're right. doing and that's the, and that's what it is and and just speaking from experience like coming from like a you know decently wealthy family mm-hmm. you know just a comfortable lifestyle all of a sudden you're throwing it luckily tough time in my childhood prepared me for new york where you know just you know what, what was that we talked about at the beginning of this podcast. Oh, okay. Going to, get, to the hood. Going okay, to the yeah, hood. going to the hood. So now yeah, yeah. I'm in New York but and two I'm in weeks the hood. Knowing that every you're year, gonna have to come back. But every year from the time different. you're kindergarten though, from kindergarten to twelfth grade, every it summer. taught you how to it taught you how to, to live and and be, I guess, in those low means yeah. and, and interact and, and not be get, happy and not be fucked with. Yeah, and well yeah. my good like I said, they're, they're all my cousins too. So they were yes. gonna they were gonna beat my ass and because they were they were teaching you to fight no for sure that's what i'm saying yeah, but yeah. yeah it taught you and just to know like be happy smarts. with what you got yeah. as long as you got you know my aunt used to say when i would and and we would eat spam sandwiches or peanut butter and jellies and mm-hmm. you know during the day we would drink from what we call the speak it which is the outside faucet yeah, yeah, on the, the house it, yeah. yeah like but it, it also it she used to always say when i would look at these sandwiches like this is all we get for lunch you'd be like a belly full is a belly full your yeah. stomach doesn't know if it's steak or a two peanut butter and jelly. It just knows it's full. And honestly, yeah. when you when you start thinking like that, it's like, well, it is true. At the time, it might not taste like shit. But once you finally get it down, you're full of shit. You're just happy you're, you're not starving. You can go to bed. You don't think, oh, I had a filet. When right. you're hungry, food tastes good. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. And that's what food. it is. You, people are like, yeah. you would eat that? I'm like, you haven't been hungry enough. You'd probably eat anything if yeah, you're hungry yeah, yeah. enough. Yeah. If you're, you haven't been, because I've been like, not eating for a day hungry it was out of my own choice yeah. like fasting but when you're that hungry you start to smell food from like a, <laughs> from you start to smell sugar in the air yeah. and some people won't understand this but you can smell sugar and salt from like across the room someone opens a little sugar you're like you're like you're tasting it and shit yeah and you're like i'm and then that's why you know i used to dude i used to Hound dollar pizza like three. Oh, that's what I used to do. Yeah, that's the only. I will say I, I've always talked about this. If there's one place to not have a lot of money and you can still get a decent meal, it's New York because you can go to a dollar pizza place and then get three slices of pizza and that's yeah. a full. Like you said, or a full you belly, keep yeah. that three, add uh-huh. two more to it. Go to one of those halal trucks, buddy. That's two days worth of eating right oh, there. Boy. Okay. Yeah. Now you kill two birds. So uh, how'd you how'd you survive with these almost? So when did you run out of money? Uh, I ran out of the twelve hundred third mm-hmm. week. 
third week. Yeah, but I but I was fine. I had a little job, so I, I was cool for probably. But okay. I was I didn't know shit about New York. I never visited New York or never seen New York before mm-hmm. I moved here. So I got bamboozled a couple times on Craigslist. Ended up one dude said he had a room. He uh-huh. ended up. Uh, being a nudist But he didn't say anything So I got there He opened the door naked It was like a whole bunch of shit Like I was like ready to fuck him up I was like what the fuck So is what it? happened He opened the door He was in his underwear Like his tidy whities He was like hi Phil And I was like Well originally When when he asked me When I found him on Craigslist He uh-huh. seemed like a normal guy He was a grad student at NYU All this shit So whatever mm-hmm. And he had a room So then I'll tell him When I'm gonna move in Perfect Tells me how much Great mm-hmm. I'm en route to his house Right like five minutes away And he says by the way, dot, 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 I'm a nudist. By then, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm already, like, I have nowhere to go. I don't know New York. So I'm like, what the fuck shit. is that? You know? This and is the first place. First place When ever. you're moving up from North Carolina. I was crashing with my okay. ex-girlfriend's sister for a week. And now she gave me seven days to find somewhere to live. Mm-hmm. So after the seventh day, this is the person I found. And so that's the part that pissed me off. Because I was like, what type of place is this? I'm like, first of all, you do a Craigslist ass. Mm-hmm. You're she said, like, <laughs> I don't really know. Like, looking for a roommate, BTW, my <laughs> dick is out. You know what I mean? Like, you don't wait till they're there to tell me you're a nudist. That should yeah. be in the ad. That's the title. Right. Yes. Yeah. Hey, nudist roommate looking Look, for one other. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's the part. That I was just like, this place is fucked up. You know what I mean? So so I, st- I made it all of two weeks. With that, that guy, guy. So, because it was just it, because he was hitting on me. He would text me like 1.30. Like, hey, Mr. Comedian, any shows tonight? I'm like. What the fuck is You're wrong? Like, bro, I'm next door. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I don't want to talk to you. You know what I mean? And I think the final straw was probably like on the second week. I remember because there used to be towels on all of his seats because he had leather couches. So they're all because oh. he was always naked. I guess you don't want like booty do residue. Ugh, I don't know. Dude. So it was just like, always gross. Final straw for me is one morning I walked in the kitchen and he was cooking bacon naked. And I was like, this nigga's a masochist. <laughs> I mean, I've never not cooked bacon and been burnt. So if you're just butt ass and like you, you like Burn the pain. your cock and you like the pain. Bacon grease, yeah. Bacon splatters, no matter how easy you cook it. So did you say, "All right, I'm out"? No, there was nothing to say. Or I, did packed, you I went get... right to my room, packed my shit, got my shit left. Did you get any of your money back or not? Just feel like no. There's no no. There's no contracts being signed. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Start whooping ass and shit, and then it kind of looks like a hate crime, and then no, you can't do right. all that shit. Just give me my shit. Give me get the fuck out of here. Damn. Uh, so then, like, I started. I mean, I started. You know, I'm. Still feel, you know, I had a couple hoes and shit. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I started meeting women. I had a couple sugar mamas. Mm-hmm. Uh, sugar mamas used to live at one for one year. A sugar mama's place for a year? Yeah, I mean, was, I mean, I was real sure. But she took me to Paris and Germany and shit. So, yeah, it was like... What? Yeah. What I, were you doing in Paris? She had a business trip. So, she, so you just went? Yeah, I went with $7 in my checking account. My mom was like, what do you mean you're going to Paris? I was like, this chick invited me to Paris. She's like, you literally have no money. I was like, she said she got me. She was like, what if she gets mad in Paris and then says you, whatever, find you, and you, she's like, $7. She said, people don't go to, she said, people save for years or a year to go to Europe, and you $7, you're comfortable going to Europe. I was like, it's fine. And I went, and when I got there, she gave me 1,000 euros right on the spot. I was fine. You know what I mean? Like, and, but that's how I live. Like, when I say I'm a free spirit, like, I, things like that don't bother me. Like, it's an adventure, you know? Like, I'm like, did you just have to, like, Fuck her fuck. a couple times a week and just fuck keep her anytime happy. I want. Yeah, it's like she yeah. talked. She was my girlfriend. I told her that. Oh, okay. Yeah, but she was. I mean, she was like fifty. Did you go around with her and stuff, or were you yeah, off no, on your own? Doing no, shit? I, w- no, I would hang out when she wasn't working. Or we would hang uh-huh. out. But then I ended up fucking another Paris chick in the bathroom, and then told her, and it was a whole. She situation. got upset. I thought she said have a good time. So, Bill, let me tell you something. <laughs> Don't tell me to do something. Then when I do it, you try to reprimand me. <laughs> you know. <laughs> let me here. tell you something. Is <laughs> the best beginning. <laughs> To try and to <laughs> excuse some <laughs> shit that you know is probably wrong. Let me tell you something real quick. Oh shit! I mean, you're right. She did tell you to have fun. Damn. So, how long were you there for? A week. Paris. Okay. Well, we, we flew to Germany. I flew into Frankfurt. Mm-hmm. We were there in Frankfurt for like three, four days, and then we took the train. It was like, no, we flew into Frankfurt. We stayed in a small town in Germany called Saarbrücken, mm-hmm. which is like five kilometers from the border of France. We were there for a week. I met a lot of cool people, tried to look for weed. Weed isn't big in that part of Germany, but they were like, we have hash. Got ripped really hash? on hash. Yeah. Jesus. I was like, boy, you got to be careful giving this out. Yeah, hash and, is, yeah. Yeah, and so then we went took the train because it was like an hour train ride to Paris. But oh, I, I couldn't make it to Amsterdam because it was like a 10-hour bus ride. And it's, yeah, it's, and you're, then you're away from her. And yeah. you, you don't have the funds. You know, yeah, yeah, it gets real tricky. I don't know. And you're in another country. <laughs> another country. So another you're continent. Plan. Yeah, it's yeah. not the best. Yeah, plus, ain't too many brothers in Germany. What I found out, they ain't like the. Oh chi- no, 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 no. But I got my so I got my nose pierced in Germany. Um, I didn't not intentionally. Yeah, okay. not intentionally. I blacked out on Jaeger. 
uh, and woke up with my nose pierced in Germany. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. What? Yeah, that's how I got my nose pierced. So, wait, so did you look in the mirror and go, what the fuck is that? No, I woke up the next day, hung the fuck up because I don't drink Jaeger. Uh -huh. And I'm talking like, I, apparently I was drinking it out the bottle, damn. You're just like, chugging it. Chugging because that's what everybody was paddling. Like, oh, mm -hmm. You know, I uh, woke up, hung over, my fucking like, nose was sore or something. So I remember going to the bathroom, like, wiping. And I was like, what the fuck? And I remember looking. And this wasn't the ring. It was a bigger one, actually, like a bigger ball. So I was like, what the fuck? And so I looked at my girl, the sugar mom, and uh -huh. I'm looking at her. And she started laughing. She's like, oh, my God, I forgot about that. And I was like, what do you mean? So the next day, we end up going for brunch. And then we go to the bar where we were at. And when uh -huh. I walk in, everybody in there, they start clapping. Like, yay! They're like, that's the guy who said, make me look like Tupac. And I died laughing. I was like, that definitely was me. I was drunk as shit. It had to be. <laughs> I was gonna say, there's not a lot of black dudes I know who rock the yeah, nose ring well. That was that's what I walked you, in. And yeah, said, bro, like, you got it. And you, you oh, can I rock love it. it now. Yeah, man. So now it's my thing. It, oh, man. they do, and that's the thing. I think that's what Kevin. Because at first, all the comedians they were like, "How many dicks do you have to suck exactly, to get that?" Like, the fuck's up and I that, almost bro. was like, "I can't." And then it was a bunch of girls that were like, "That shit is sexy." Nah, so, it works on you. It's, yeah, it's a certain, it. and I cannot explain what the energy is, and I think it's different on each person. But certain people, they just can make it work. And I think it's a confidence thing. It. I think it's one of the things you got to feel like you're like, what do you, you know, I got my nose. You know what I mean? It's when you're self conscious about, like when I first had it, that's when yeah. you're not. And yours isn't, you know, a lot of times with piercings, you can tell if the person likes it and that's why they got it or they wanted to uh, call attention to themselves and that's why they got it. And those are very, there's two very different piercings. Absolutely. What, the first one that you like it, it's probably small. Maybe it's a little, like, a little artistic, whatever. Right. The second one is huge. <laughs> it says, look at me. I'm badass and I'm different. And you're like, look that's at the person. You're like, I can't even talk to you, dude. What <laughs> is this shit on your nose? And Or the like the... Two oh, shit, the snake bites, yeah, yeah. Or the all that stuff. You go, what's going on, man? Yeah, it's that's where, but that's crazy. And, and the thing is, you know, I'm saying, like I said, my parents are really conservative, so they uh -huh. hate all my tattoos. My mom, I remember the first tattoo I got. My mom was like, "You have no class. You are trash." <laughs> <laughs> She's like, "You're uncouth." You're like, "I love you." Oh, couth, <laughs> uncouth. I had a girl <laughs> use that referencing me, and I said, "Fuck yeah, I'm uncouth." Yeah, I'm a wild child. I was like, "I have no couth, and I'll never get any." Yeah, I don't want any. Yeah, y'all sound boring. Yeah, that's mm. couth is boring. If you spell couth differently, it spells boring. And yeah. I know that's not true, but it is true. It, okay, dude, I'm telling you, it is true. And then the the nose ring was probably like I remember my dad like he didn't yeah, say anything. He said. just he just kept staring at it. And he did, but he didn't ever acknowledge. He just, I was like, "What's up?" He was like, "No." Uh. And just, <laughs> it was even it was just like, hey, and then at one point, I remember he turned to me, and said, "If you're bored, son, I can get you a book." <laughs> He's like, "You ever heard of Kurt Vonnegut?" Like, no, 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 no. If you're bored, I can get you a book. You know, did he know you were going with your girlfriend to Paris and shit? I mean, yeah. They, yeah. Well, the thing is, they knew she was older, so my mom, she was like, "This isn't your girl." I'm like, "Yeah, it is." She was like, "No, it's not." Okay, I'm like, so they're they're. The kind of parents that are aware enough, but they don't pry too much because they don't really want to They don't want to know the answers. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. They, But they know some shady shit is going on, mm -hmm. but they just, my mom's like, make good decisions. They're like, so. I trust Phil. Not He's gonna really. going to get into some shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, not really. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, well, okay, maybe not. Yeah. That's so, why they're always they're like, it's time for you to grow up a little bit. It son. seems like they haven't had to bail you out too many times, though. Uh, uh, no, I've only I've I've only been arrested one time. I, I, I don't oh, mean jail. Oh, I mean I'm in like, general. No, I mean, I was I like, nothing ever stuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, they. I really am. When I, I'm actually fairly well, I'm not. I'm mm -hmm. fairly intelligent, but I actually yeah. I do make. I'm a wild dude, but when shit doesn't feel right in my gut, I don't go against the yeah, feeling. You feel me? Like if I'm partying and shit, and I'm like, eh, I'm not sure. I don't because I've done enough and I've been seen enough. Where if I'm feeling that way, it's probably for good reason I have a weird feeling about it yeah, you know what I mean? yeah 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 usually when your gut is telling you something you should probably listen to yeah, it yeah and that's why even at the end of the day if it ended up being nothing there was something about it that just isn't right but for some reason when it comes to ugly women and sex it never I'm always gonna do it and yeah, I'm like that's wow be that's because <laughs> right below your gut is something that has, has more neurons that are like <laughs> Taking control of everything. I have yeah. never said no to an ugly chick trying to fuck me. I mean, well, okay, I take that back. There have been some real mud ducks, but for oh, the Jesus most part, <laughs> like rarely do I was like, you gotta be fucked up when I'm like, nah. Dude, it's uh I feel the same way. Yeah. I mean, I've I've just there's been a lot of times where I've gone, I don't even really know if I want to have sex right now. <laughs> but if the person wants to, I go, I gotta. Yeah. It's just like I'm not gonna initiate it, but if you roll over here, 
I'm, I'm gonna do like, what I gotta I, do. I'm like, I gotta make my 15 year old self proud. <laughs> yeah. Because he wanted to every single goddamn day, so I gotta make up for it. Do you ever do that now when you, as an older, like, it's just certain shit you'll do, and you'll be like, if my 15 year old self could see you, boy. Oh now. shit, if my 22 year old self could see it, he'd still be happy. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think about that with certain things, and it makes me happy. I think I'm almost done. I think I'm almost done fulfilling all the things he wanted that's to. That's what I we'll think. We'll see. That's <laughs> that's what you thought. But then again, I'm still not married, and I'm yet again, I don't. S- I like. I want to get, but again, I don't see it. I'm like, who? Like, I literally, I don't like none of the women I'm fucking right now. Mm. I can't stand them. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, but that might be something more in with you and how you're thinking about it. That's maybe like, I'm not allowing myself to to like any of these girls. And this is coming from me because they're trash. Who's very similar. I love okay, women. Maybe I love trash. women, yeah. but I. Here's the thing. I have this, I don't want to call it fetish because they're mm-hmm. all, I love hood chicks. Like, they're such oh, okay. a good time. I mean, fantastic sex. We get along. Uh-huh. We get each other. Ain't shit. I would never have a kid with any of them because I'm like, you'd be a horrible mom, but you're a great time in the sack. You see what I'm saying? So maybe you're attracted to the ones that are, see, but that could be you're attracted to the type of girl that you know you'll never date. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is, though. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but but the ones, like, I've had girls who were really good looking, interesting. Mm-hmm. And I tried to date them, and they were so fucking boring. Like, yeah. I was just like, I am miserable. Like, they were in bed every night at 9.30 because they had to work or something like mm-hmm. that, or 10, you know, or they didn't want to drink. Or They're like, do you have to drink every night? Yeah. And I'm looking at them like, it's Thursday. Why the fuck would I not drink tonight? <laughs> like, we're having a good, you know, it's one of those type of things. So, But the thing is, that's the type of woman I'd want to marry. But mm-hmm. then my boy's like, but then you just cheat on her. I'm like, again, I don't want that to be the thing. But that's the caliber of woman I want to have, you know, like a family with. Yeah, you have this idea of girls that you have sex with and then girls that you'd want a relationship with. And southern right now, gentleman. And right now that, that Venn diagram is not overlapping at all. But as a Southern gentleman, why can't I yeah. have my wife and be a normal person and have my mistresses and just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand. Hey, you can, man. There are some people that like polyamorous lifestyles. No, oh, buddy, but, don't get me started on that fuck shit. But, I just... <laughs> they, but they have to be aware of it. Oh, what you've done it? It didn't work out. Just literally got done with some bullshit. Like okay, that. so what was it? I can't even talk about it because no. it's still. And it's, I, I don't even. I don't even give the up. bitch the privilege of even mentioning her <laughs> on this fucking podcast. Was it multiple women or like guys? And it, it was well, a so. one that I've really fallen for, and uh, then like she and they wanted to bring me in or some shit. But I was. It was like, oh god, it, I'm not again. I can't even get on this shit because oh, I, I might snap it. this laptop I can see it in, in half. The neck. I can oh, see it in the neck, dude. The neck. I, up. When I tell you, I don't, it's not for me. Mm-hmm. I thought I could do it. Not for me. And honestly, you I'm like. You're really emotional. You feel emotional. I'm pretty telling hard. you, dude. Yeah. But here's the thing I think it's an ego thing. It's it like, is, I yeah. can't be the back burner. They're like, you're not. I'm like, first off, there's always first place. Oh, yeah. Say, if you ain't first, you're last. And that's what I didn't think they understood. Cause I'm shaking and baking over here. You feel uh-huh, me? Uh-huh, and uh-huh. that's all. They were like, no, it's equal love. No, that's Bitch, no way. How? Especially if you've been with that person and then I come in. Well, just simple human emotion. If I have more time in with you, how could you love me the same amount? Here, people who are poly will try to explain. They're it broken. Is what the fuck? They- <laughs> <laughs> I think it. I think it's a certain type of person, and they're wired differently. Yeah, where they can do that, but a lot of people cannot. Because I'm ready to go to jail, bro. Yeah, I was. That's exactly. where I was at with it. Like, yeah, dude. I mean, I'm with that too. <laughs> like, I've fuck never he wants done to do. poly shit because I've always been like. It just is not for me. No. I mean, if I'm going to be in a relationship, it's going to be with one person, or I'm just not going to be in a relationship. So you think they're born actually like thinking that way? I like, think it might be, yeah. Okay. And, I, and I think I've talked to, I had a, a person that's very into like the polyamorous lifestyle on the show, and I asked her, I was like, you know, when you were growing up and you started dating, did you feel like this wasn't for you? And she, I, I think I remember her saying, it, yeah, it never really felt right for me. I always kind of was interested in, maybe having other people. Or she was like, I would always end up cheating. Yeah. And so I realized, okay, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to hurt people like that. So let me investigate yeah, the poly it- lifestyle. But for you, it seems that the poly lifestyle isn't working and you're worried about cheating. And the Somebody only wa- said open. They were mm-hmm. like, you might be in an open relationship. I was That's like, the yeah. I, same thing. I, no, it's, it's not. Well, but, it's- but the thing is, then here comes the insecure side of Phil. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, of course I can fuck. I was like, 
but my girlfriend but gets banged out. Yeah, right. No, like, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, Every well, see, feel like shit. Now you yeah, can't yeah. have everything. Every guy's like that. So, they're like, you know, I can fuck because yeah. I know that it means nothing to me. me. But women but, think of sex different. Yeah, I know that yeah. she will even Which though, is dumb as hell. Because some, because a girl could get railed out and be like, yeah, bye, bro. Bye, which they do yes. sometimes. But a as a man, we do. really, and the thing is, as men, we like to think we don't catch feelings because we don't mention it, but we get butt hurt after fucking for three times. And then oh, you're yeah, like, wait, you're fucking another dude? So we we don't got shit figured out neither. Uh, no, no, no. You no, know, no. Well, we like to think we if do. If the girl's like, oh, yeah, I was just in another guy's house, you're like, all right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> I, need, um, I need you to leave right now, or I need you to tell me this dude's address. I'm going to go fuck, fuck him you. up. <laughs> and you were like, we've gone to dinner twice. Yeah, and, and you're, yeah, that they're like, we're not dating. You're like, I don't care. <laughs> There's a rage inside me that I need to get out. Okay, yeah. so let's, dude. It's it's a real emotion. So I've had it. This so I've I've never been anything open, and I've only ever really had it with um one of my exes who we were we would be on again, off again, and then we would make the mistake of every time we were on again, we would tell each other about the uh, partners that we had had since we had split up, which is a horrible, horrible decision. decision. And can I tell you, the dude that she was with that I know of and know their names and know what they look like, I still want to fuck them up <laughs> to this day if I saw them. And I'm not dating her. I haven't talked to her in two years. I don't give a fuck. I see him on the street. He's getting popped, and he's going to be like, what the fuck Can was that for? I go, that's it. for fucking my girl four years ago, bro. <laughs> All right? The whole <laughs> situation I'm talking about where I'm like, I can't talk about it. Yeah. I felt so disrespected at one point where I'm not even mad at her. It's the principle of uh -huh. the city. This is a respect thing. Now, the motherfucker exactly. violated, and if I ever see him, it's on site. And it's also because <laughs> it, is, it is on site. It's and on it's also because I know you were watching, and when you saw us split up, you fucking slid in because I've been that guy all right we've all been that guy watching him be like I know it's gonna break up just wait for it just wait for it hey what's up how you doing and I knew he did that especially shit especially for me I feel like he's the one who put the word in like you gotta end it with him exactly. and that's why I'm like when I see you my mm -hmm. dog it's on, on site, site. <laughs> okay. it's on site you better be ready because you're gonna catch you better hands. put your hands up because I'm coming like a Mack <laughs> truck exactly. I'm coming <laughs> hard bro coming in hot that's baby. what it is dude it is yeah he probably she she probably complained or said some shit, and he was like, oh, you don't deserve that. And she goes, you're right. And then that's when it... Dude, it's... it's There aren't a lot of people that that happens with. But <laughs> yeah, dude, so you feel funny. it hard. And it, it... Dude, it gets I think you. I'm done with love, though. And that's what people are. Are you bitter? I'm like, I'm so. fucking right. I don't want to say bitter. I just believe that love always ends in heartache, even when it's good. You either love and then they die after old age and you're still heartbroken. Well, or love's they break a drug, up. man. It is. it is. And it's a, it's a real good drug. And I think... Thinking about it ending in heartache like that is, it's inevitable. You know what I mean? Like, because you're going to die. So would you rather die, have loved someone, deal with that? It's better to love and lost and the better not. All that, yeah, oh, and that it sounds bullshit. like bullshit, but I still think it's true to, for certain people. Because when you're in it and it's good, it's fantastic. But it's also diff it has different, it's waves, dude. It has different stages. Because like that, that new relationship love, that shit's not going to be around forever. You're going to get in fights over dumb shit. You're going to be like, why do you put, you brush your teeth like that? Like you're going to get over dumb shit. But it's like, it moves from um, that, oh, I'm obsessed with you love to kind of that like uh, we're partners love. That, that's right. how I see it working. But it is hard, man. I mean, look, I'm like you, bro. I was with someone, it didn't work, and I tried with a couple other people, and it always seemed to not work, and then I would just go, you know what, fuck that. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna push this down. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna go off and. Just I'm horny. I'm. A, I'm just gonna be a hoe. Yeah, yeah I'm exactly. Horny. And I'm. And I'm. And I'm with it. I like slutting. Exactly. Yeah, it's fun because I get to do the playing. You don't get to play with my emotions. I play with yours. And, and that's then when you, I break that's it you off putting up those shields. You're like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It feels better. It does. <laughs> it feels better. It does. But I think what happens with um, people like us that do that after a certain time, we go, all right, Wh whatever age it is, whatever point in your maturity is or just your life in general, you go, I'm ready to change this shit up and at least see and take these chances and figure it out. And it, and it might be for you eight more years. You don't know, man. I know. But it, it does happen. I think for most people, some people, they just always are going to be, you know, they're going to be like Uncle T. They're going to yeah. be like Uncle George. Yeah. And that's fine, man. And they've probably had relationships where they got close with someone. And maybe if you ask them, Hey, Uncle, hey, Uncle T, you know, 
was there someone that you really fell for and then it didn't work out and it caused you to want to just go back to not being that open? They'd probably say, yeah. yeah. You know, it all comes it's from a place twice. Of, Yeah, it all I've comes from a place out, of hurt. And that's all I... I think, like, the first time I was young... Mm-hmm. Actually, oh, God. It's been three times. Yeah. yeah. And three times. I'm talking, like, that where I'm crying in the shower so I don't have to see the tears. Damn. Yeah, you know exactly. I'm a real brother, so I don't be out there <laughs> open with that Playing shit. Playing R&B. Yeah. <laughs> Let it burn. <laughs> Cry some more. <laughs> just, boys, the matter some shit. Oh my god, yo! But and mm-hmm. that's and and that's kind of thing. You start like you said. You, it's a defense mechanism. Then you get to the yeah. point where you're in your thirties and you like, I'm telling you, the next motherfucker who plays with my heart <laughs> is fucking dead. It's dead. Yeah, <laughs> it's fucking I'm gonna go to jail. Yeah, and they're not gonna be. Do here not anymore. fuck with me and yeah. my emotions because I'm telling you, I'm unstable. I am so and shaky. I'm aware of that. And that's why I'm single. I'm going to plead insanity. Exactly. And I'm getting off. Exactly. It's going to work. <laughs> I have my case. Because I wore your body. Exactly. <laughs> it's, I know. I'm telling you. It's that's, fucked up. I, I, I t- I've talked about it before. It, dudes, when, they, when we say, oh, we're not as emotional, it's just a different type of emotional. We still have those emotions. And we don't handle them well because we're not used to not, them. We don't want to deal with them. <laughs> Women are good. I mean, look, sometimes... They, I, I do think they feel them more than us. They have more. Home. I, I still think they feel emotions harder than us, but that's why they're better. I was gonna say, but they're, they're stronger. Women are stronger al- than us, bro. and they allow themselves to feel it. Dudes, you're like, I don't fuck. Like, we, yeah. all we understand is just like violence, and then, yeah. like, that's you make us sad, you make yeah. us embarrassed. Violence. I exactly. want to hurt you because I don't know time, how to handle this, exactly. so I'm gonna kill you. Time to kill. <laughs> yeah. Time to work out. Or let's go to war. But yeah, that's exactly. all I think. It's either when I'm angry or I'm sad, I got to pump some iron. I got to do some push-ups. Oh, yeah, I do Or yeah. I'm going to rip your fucking face. That's mm-hmm. really where I go to. I got to get this off of me because I don't like You got to learn to deal with it. And I think it's, uh, I think dudes have to learn how to talk about it with other, like, friends of theirs, of theirs. And then also, I do think it's a an age thing because I think guys that are in their late 30s 40s even like they start to soften just a little bit to where they can at least admit that they have those emotions can talk about it uh you know i know my dad now compared to my dad when he was 45 he's a softer dude and not like he's a bitch i mean he's just willing he's friendlier he's willing to talk about shit he's more open i mean dude so is that something that happens to us because my dad's the same way to the point where it was kind of weird yeah you're like what the fuck's going on i had a conversation with my dad the other day where we were like talking about like dave Chappelle came up and he was like because the thing the problem with my dad is that politics always finds its way in and my dad is a conservative dude um and all of a sudden he was like you know he was like, I love Chappelle. Chappelle is great. And, you know, he's like, even with this last special, like, I think it was 846 or 848. Yeah, yeah. Oh. He goes, you know, I watched it. I really liked it. And he goes, and even when he talked about stuff and I didn't fully agree with him, I will never understand his experience and what it's like to be a black man in America. <laughs> and I was like, dad, what? in my head, I was like, where the fuck is this coming from? <laughs> he's like, I'll never understand. And I, I appreciate hearing that perspective and putting it into what I understand about the world and thinking about that and considering it and and it informing my opinions. And I was like, holy shit. Yeah. What the f- what the fuck? This is from the same guy that when I brought you a 95, he goes, why isn't it 100? I'm like, damn, okay. That's, my dad's it, been a hard ass my whole life. Mm-hmm. Probably about, uh, I want to say a week and a half, two weeks ago, he calls me. He was like, hey, uh, I was like, what you doing? Nothing, man. Uh, trying out this new brownie recipe I found. I said, <laughs> What? <laughs> I like it scared the shit out of me. I was like, Yo, what the fuck are you talking? What are you enjoying life? Yeah. What's going on? I tell you the motherfucking brownies were so yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, it just he's like, I almost I almost cried. You're yeah. like, oh uh, no, yeah. I, I gotta go, Pops. Yeah, yeah. I love you, man. Bye. I got a show. I got a show. Yeah, yeah I got like, Dude, I'm telling you, but my dad's always been that hard disciplinarian. Uh-huh. And and I mean he just his birthday was yesterday. Yeah. And he just turned 64. And I'm like, this is not the same dude who used to whoop my ass for sure for getting detention. <laughs> I think it's uh, yeah, I think it's an age thing, and I think it's also like a wisdom perspective thing. You know, yeah. the, when you're lucky enough to be around for that long, you start going like, "How was I so upset about shit?" Or like, "Oh, this kind of stuff doesn't matter." Or you know, it and it depends. Some guys stay hard their entire life, and I think that's partially a defense mechanism. I think a lot of the dudes, you talk to them, and you can you can find the spot that made him like that yeah but hopefully i mean it'll happen to you dude it'll happen to me that all of a sudden we'll be like all right damn i've been to 
I've I've been too much of a of a hard ass on myself. As long as I ain't got to wear the pins. Yeah. Cool nah, you. I mean, you won't. If I no. start shitting on myself, y'all pull the plug. They have pull robots. The plug they have me. robots and shit that'll make sure your asshole works. <laughs> and you know, we just have a tube or something. And you know what? If we're around and you start wearing the pins, I'll gladly I'll b- gladly pull the plug on you. That, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know what? I couldn't ask for more from you. Yeah. You know that's what that's what you got to do. <laughs> but you know, I'm not gonna pull the plug on you. Uh, you know, you know what I'm gonna do? This is so fucked up. <laughs> I'm going to pull the plug on you, but before I do, I'm going to put you on a really, really high roller coaster, <laughs> so you have to embrace your fear of heights right before you actually die. <laughs> so you're going to, in your head, be like, fuck you, Dylan, as you as you hit that DMT and you you know, uh, you know trip for your hardest time. Okay. It's kind of nice, right? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Oh. How did you, um, when, when you were homeless and you were dealing with it, how did you push through because you were with her for a year so you had a spot to stay yeah and then, then you we were bobbing from place yeah, to place. place stayed in a couple basements of some comedy clubs but yeah. you were never on the street yeah i slept on the two train a few times slept in okay. uh, the park over there riverside park did uh, you did you meet any dudes that were like just consistently home or any of that yeah or just fred kinda... and some of people living on the two train who would always be like yeah. what up young fella you know it'd be cool because i always just hold my book bag and uh-huh. i don't you gotta understand i was out Doing shows and then drinking to like to a to four, four. yeah. So you only got like three hours of darkness, really. So it wasn't, and then uh, like then rush hour starts. So then by seven eight, I was normally up walking or something, you know. Just do you think you were out drinking till four because you knew you had, I had nowhere, nowhere else to go? to go? Yeah, and the drinks were normally free with a drink ticket. And so. you're like, I'd rather be around people than right then, yeah, because be you don't the look train. homeless. Yeah, exactly. you, you know what I mean. And I never that's enough people didn't know because I never dressed. I was never in rags. I always. I, mean, I, knew you, I knew you through the entire right, time. Yeah. I didn't know you and were most people until didn't. recently someone then, brought it up. And then people would always be like, Phil, you don't have anywhere to stay? I'm like, no, not really. They were like, why didn't you say Because I don't know you. And that's just how I was raised. Like, don't nobody owe you shit. It you know what I mean? Kinda, your, yeah, exactly. your, your problem has become my problem because I decided to do this. And so. it's uncomfortable for some people. Because, right. I mean, to be like, hey, can I stay there? That and, they don't, and they don't really know me. Mind you, I just moved here. Yeah. So I was like, what do I look like? And I, I, I'm mm-hmm. always been a big pride guy and you know I know people a lot of people say a closed mouth don't get fed and that's true if I know you but I'm also the type if I don't know you I'm not putting my shit out there in the streets because everybody don't give a fuck some people use that against you which I've I've seen that firsthand too in this comedy shit mm-hmm. where people who did know after you know we were somewhere and then you know especially these whack ass comedians that be on the scene always mm-hmm. some people you know real comedians are just funny people and they they're funny on stage but when they're off stage they're normal and they say some funny is that but a lot of these fucking pieces of shit they always think they got to be on like there's something to prove like I got to be funny yeah, all the yeah. time which they're not funny on stage so you don't definitely got to be funny off, be the funny off the stage so you know so now you're talking and they feel like maybe you're getting too much spotlight or they're not getting any laughs. They'll be like, hey, Phil, where are you going to sleep tonight? Like, I've been talking to girls and dudes have been like, well, where are you going to take them? And I've literally looked at them like, don't oh, let this wow. comedy get you fucked up. And, you know, and that's the thing. So that's the type. I am the type. Like, I put hands on motherfucker. I really don't give a fuck what well, those are those is. people that they were taking comedy and trying to rectify uh, how much of a loser they were in high school. Oh, and, yeah. and comedy was their second high school. Because there's all these clicks. That's what it is. All, yeah. And so but, they want to be yeah. the top... The top and it's cute, the but I'm like, I, you know, you don't, there's no, first of all, we're not even in a club right now, so you don't got nobody to impress. So yeah. for you just, and I don't know you like that, we're not on that level to be playing like that. So what you're doing you is you're really trying to, good. yeah, and you're also, trying to embarrass. Even if you are friends if with you're someone, fr- you don't do that. I if, would never fuck my boy up like especially that. Especially in front of some people I've never met. It's not like we're, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know them. I don't know you. So what you're doing, yeah, you're trying to embarrass me, which is now, like I said, now it's a respect thing. So I'm gonna whoop you right? because that's I'm, not how we yeah. handle this. You know what I mean? But if you really were my friend, you wouldn't try to embarrass me in front of some girls. You wouldn't, because if anything, I want you to win because that means I might be winning. We might exactly. get to like, let's and, go too. Exactly, and I get to hear about it. If yeah, not, or let's... double date or something. You know what I mean? Like let's go. But now you're just being a dick. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah. like oh, and I yeah, that's and that I've seen it's happened multiple times. I just want those, like, are, yeah. those are sad, insecure people that do that. Oh yeah, and um. Sometimes they, you know, they need to be taught. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Sometimes you got to put hands on people. Sometimes. <laughs> That's. I mean, you know what? That I, 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 did Uncle T teach you that because yeah. it's not there. Yeah. Sometimes, hey, sometimes you got to be touched. You know. <laughs> Is Uncle T still around? Absolutely, yeah? okay. still kicking. He's still calm and say, "What's up?" Yeah. And check in. He's a minister now. Oh, is he? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I have my weird relationship with religion sometimes so I'm like yeah, yeah, interesting. anybody can get one of those robes okay, uh, okay. so you've seen uh, you've seen <laughs> yeah, the seen pre minister things. guy yeah I'm okay. like and now you're did, good. Yeah, did you used to go to church you know going I more? grew up every every Sunday did not okay. and Wednesday Bible study and then my mom was in the choir yeah. so every Monday 
Yeah, I was. When'd you stop going? The only time I could once I. When you came to New York, one, no. Once I moved out of my mom's house, oh, okay. and then, but I still go to church though. So what now? Now, as of probably like the last year, or so like I've gotten kind of back into it. Like you know, I don't have no problem telling people I'm a Christian. You know, I ain't no uh-huh. holy roller. I still smoke weed and fuck hoes. Yeah. Why'd but, you start going? Because I grew up in me, and it just it made me. It feels, feels right. Yeah, it feels right. Like for a mm-hmm. long, for I mean, like five, six years, like I never went. Like I, because I, when I was eighteen, I remember telling my mom, I was like, I got enough church to last me the rest of my life. I was like, I'll never come back. Yeah. And then as I got older, I kind of started to see. I was like, honestly. Yeah, I I don't necessarily agree with religion because I'm like everybody thinks they're right and they're, half of them are corrupt. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I think you're you can have a relationship with a higher power no matter what you believe in, and it's not for you to judge because it's my business. So I ain't got to tell you. You know what I mean? As long as me and me and God cool, that's my man's. I'm gonna exactly. pray. You know what I mean? Shit. I don't really care if you believe him because that that doesn't do shit for me. Believe in what you want to believe in. Also, you know? man, a lot you know a lot of the uh, stories and the themes that you hear there. It's just it can be a good reminder because right. you know a lot a lot of the Bible is written in parables. Yeah. And it's allegories. It's like. What's the point of this story? Right, like, the the, what, yeah, what's what is the preacher going to tell you? Like, here's why we're telling the story about Joseph and well, whatever, right. whatever the story is. And look, if at the end of the day you're taking an hour to go hear some guy try to make a point that is probably going to end in here's how you treat people better or here's how you take responsibility for something or yada yada, because most of them are pretty positive. Right. It's going to be, I would say, decently overall a net positive for your mental health it should be so it's like yeah and there's a community aspect i understand why a lot of people go so it's like people that rail on it probably went to church and then were you know they went too much but i mean my brothers go to church they're like it's just not and in the south that even the prostitutes go to church yeah Yeah, i mean we're talking about like literally every drug dealer i know is in church every sunday if it makes you feel good it's like why the fuck not right bro like you're not preaching about it you're right i'm not the one i'm listening and and sometimes you get a good word sometimes or really like it's, it, it energizes you for the week. It you know does. what I mean? Like sometimes and it feels you just, really relevant. You're yeah, like, Damn, I need and sometimes to hear that. it feels like the man is talking directly to you. You're yep. like, yo, this is crazy. But You're like, I need you, you needed that. that. And the thing is, like I said, I I think I get why a lot of you don't like it because religious people are so judgy sometimes. So that's why I get. But it's like again, if it makes you feel good, mm-hmm. I don't have shit to explain to nobody. And those else. religious people that are judgy aren't following the real teachings of that of religion because that that's exactly what they say don't do. It's all supposed so to be it's just it's like, all about yeah. you, man. Yeah, it's man. Any religion you. has fucked up people. That's why I'm people are like, well he's Muslim. He's I'm like, don't don't bro, there's plenty of crazy Muslims just like there's plenty of Christians who don't walked in shooting shit. Exactly. So you know what I mean? Like there's you can't even get called the crusade. Right. You know like what, I mean? what are y'all like, talking about? We, you can't just place a religion like they're crazy. You know, there's people extremists in the everything. Day, yeah. People are fucking crazy. Yeah, people crazy. are extreme. Yeah, don't, no they're, don't, they're, they're co-opted in religion to do the crazy <laughs> right, shit they right. wanted to do anyway. Yeah, to find a scripture to go with, but yeah, they picked it exactly. out of thousands of words, of course, you know? A thousand. Yeah. Um, I wanted to, to ask you before, um, so when you were watching, um, when you got that penthouse, uh, and did you start looking at it and then say whatever? Or were you like consistently looking at it at six years old? Like, did you show oh, up to I friends? Oh, I was like the penthouse, the penthouse oh. magazine. Oh sorry, yeah, so sorry. Like, yeah. Like, do, do you remember when you first started to be like, oh, I can do something with this magazine? Or like the first, first time I jacked yeah, when it, you jacked oh, off. Man. Yeah, the first time I jacked it was like eight years later, fourteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Six plus that eight, makes yeah. about sense. Yeah. So I, I, I saw it. Yeah. Uh, I had seen plenty of porn. Like I said, I, mm-hmm. I got my TV taken out of my room in third grade because uh, my parents caught me watching real sex on HBO. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Like, porn's kind of been part but of But you were life. just watching it. You were just like... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, yeah. yeah, it was either real sex or taxi cab confessions, but it was one of them HBO wow. late night yeah, shows. Yeah. And, yeah, my parents called me. I was like, what are you... I was like, they're wrestling. And <laughs> she took me... And so then I remember... Uh, I wouldn't be. No, I might have been second grade because that's when we had the sex talk. It was in second grade. My mom asked me, "Do you I know what sex talk?" She was like, "Because like, yeah, because she remembers me mm-hmm. being." And yeah, she was like, "Do you know what sex is?" I was like, "It's when you get naked and roll around and wrestle." And uh, she was yeah. like, "Not quite." There's part of this. She was like, "But it's when a married man and a married woman." She had to put that married yeah, in there. Yeah, got to put that. We yeah, religious. Yeah, yeah. Married man, and married woman. And and she and she said, and what do you have in your private? I said a penis. And she said, what do girls have now? I was like vagina. She said, and the penis has to be introduced to the vagina when they're married. And I was like, oh, oh. introduction, handshakes, got you. Okay. Did you ever feel shame then around se- when you first started having sex and you weren't married, or did you not give a shit? I couldn't wait. I, I mean, I, I grew up in the church, so no, don't have sex before you're married. That's all you hear. And, you and in my head, do it. in my head, I was like. Who the fuck is waiting that long? Like I was like married. I was like that's at least twenty something. Yeah. And I was like, but high school is now, 
And do you see the tits on this yeah, one? Exactly. Wow. <laughs> She's a but double a D. People, a lot of people, they do that, but then they feel shame. You, well, after. the first time I busted, like I finally had sex. I, yeah. No, no, I kind of did. I was like, oh, I should have waited till marriage. And it literally was like five minutes. Yeah, I was like, not really. I just do this again. You're like, no, this feels right. Well, the thing is, it, it, like I said, my mom being such a religious person, my parents, and mm -hmm. you learn growing up that not there's not one sin that way outweighs another. So when I had the sex, uh -huh. I was like, well, if this is the same as murder, you know what I mean? Like in my head, it just didn't make. Yeah. I was like, no, I was like this. I said like, this can't be the same as murder. Oh, or this. Okay, okay, so I was okay. like, I, I don't. I was like, no, I don't feel bad. Like yeah, it's a sin. I was like, but cussing's a sin. And I still do that. So I kind of okay. justified you it to myself. Yeah, yeah, like, you, you, there's got to be levels to sin. It's a pretty rational argument. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You're the hierarchy of sin. You're like, busting is at the way bottom. You gotta be. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. It's gotta be you're like, like man, Skittles. If, if this feels this good and it's a sin, imagine you're like, murder must feel really <laughs> good. Holy shit. I get it. Maybe I should try that out. Yeah. I <laughs> after, the exactly. after the sex. After the sex. Hey, I don't have to deal with it anymore. <laughs> and that's when Phil became a serial killer. I became Dexter. Serial killer. That's when he became Dexter. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, uh, Phil, you're great, bro. Thank you're you, very buddy. funny, dude. Thank you for doing this. Bro. I appreciate I really you appreciate having it. me, man. Where, really do, uh, where do people find you? Uh, you can catch me on all the socials. Um, so I'm on Instagram, Twitter. Those are the two. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you can find me, Funny Phil Duck. Funny is spelled with an F. No slick shit. People like funny with a PH. No, you fucktard. Oh, because of, <laughs> of the Phil. Phil, yeah, yeah. I'm like, it's funny. You're like, I'm not that corny. Right. It's yeah. funny. F U N N Y P H I L D U C K. Funny Phil Duck. I appreciate y'all having me. Yeah, man. I, you know, when I first saw Funny Phil Duck, I was like, what's the duck? I was like, I didn't know. Everybody if that calls was, me Duck. Like yeah, my friends instead do. Instead of Duck. Yeah, instead of it's Duck a, it. Yeah, Duck But it. I think for a long time, I never thought about the fact that your last name was Duck it. So I was like, is Duck a nickname for middle school? Like, I didn't know what right. it was. Or I was like, Funny Phil Duck. I was like, does he say he looks mm -hmm. like a duck? I was just confused. You know, so And then once you get to know, like, everyone's like, what up, like, Duck? Oh, <laughs> what up, Duck? I'm an idiot. Okay. <laughs> this is literally right. his name. That's literally his name. Okay, I need to I need to sleep a little bit. <laughs> awesome. Okay, Funny Phil Duck. Um, he'll, you know, you'll see him when stand up opens up again. You'll see him all around. He's, he's performing all over. He'll probably be on uh, Jersey Zoom next show, month. Maybe. I'm doing okay. hosting an outside show in uh, West New York at Viva La, Viva La Margarita. Viva I'm La Margarita. In, okay. In West New York and New Jersey. And follow him. He'll post all on. Yeah, I post all, all everything. Post it all man. there. I have great, funny shit, good content. Yeah, check him out. Sweet. Phil, you're Thanks, the man, buddy. dude. Appreciate I'm going uh, give me uh, Uncle T's number so I can give him a call. I'll right? let you know. <laughs> all right, we'll talk to you soon, I guess.